Hey, what's going on, everybody on YouTube? Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another live show. And this is going to be an educational show that's going to teach you guys and cover the topic of board games. So essentially what we're going to be doing is diving into the sold listings on eBay. And we're going to be covering the best-selling items within the board game category which have sold. So these are items that are selling, they've sold, they are proven to sell. There's no ifs, buts, what if that happened? It's sold, it's been documented in eBay history. So we're going to be going through the sold listings. Uh, one thing I want to ask of you guys is to, first of all, smash that like button. Also, if you guys want to leave a comment and uh, you know introduce yourself, let me know where you're from and how long you've been reselling. Feel free to drop a comment. If you're on a desktop, there is a comment section on the right-hand side of the screen. If you are on a cell phone or um, maybe you're on a uh, – what are those things called? I don't even remember. But – it should be at the bottom of the screen as well. So look for the uh, look for the comment section. It uh, looks like we got 19 people in the house so far. We got 11 likes and only one dislike. So that's a pretty good ratio right there. I'm really happy about that. Let me know if you, got, if you guys can hear me okay. I want to make sure that the sound is working properly. So bear with me for one moment. Okay. Looks like the sound is working properly. Shout some people out in the house right now. I'm in the comment section uh, browsing through. We've got Swamp Picker, who is first. Swamp Picker, man, you are quick. You are definitely quick. So I got to give you big, uh, big, uh, a big shout out for that. Thrift Coach, what's going on, Rob? Finally made the start of a show. Love selling board games. Same here, Rob. That's why I'm doing it, man. Good to see you. Everybody go, go subscribe to Thrift Coach on YouTube. He's doing some big things and recently hosted him on my uh, YouTube channel as well. Swamp Picker says, old Monopoly French versions, never used, but open. So, yeah, we got a lot of people in the house. What's up, Spooky? Trip Little says, a hater hit dislike already. WTF. Hey, man, the haters are going to be haters. Whoa. I, I think you guys converted the hater to a, to a like because all of a sudden the dislike disappeared. So, uh, Trip Little, man. Keep keep uh, working your magic. Board games have very small margins, is what legit gamer legit price is saying. And I'd like to kindly, I hate to disagree with my viewers, but I'd like to kindly and respectfully disagree with you. I I believe, and based on my experience, this isn't this isn't a belief, but based on my experience, board games have some of the best margins in the business. If you come across the right ones, and if you come across them in the right in correct condition. I recently sold a board game the other day. The board game was called, uh, what the heck was it called? Somebody help me out. Something Towers. Somebody help me out. I know you saw it in one of my videos, but I sold it for $150. Recently sold a Monopoly game for $80. Um, I sell board games all the time. And in my opinion, I'm not just saying this, I feel that board games are an amazing opportunity. So again, thanks for watching this show. If you're brand spanking new to eBay or Amazon, I want to say board games are a great item to get into. There's a lot of money to be made. There's always board games available at thrift stores and garage sales. Um, sometimes at pawn shops every now and then, retail stores. Uh, you could scoop them off, off a Craigslist. There's so many ways to get your hands on board games and there's a lot of money in them. So with that being said, let's dive into this show and start to cover the best selling board games on eBay. And one thing I want to say real quick is you know, I'm, I'm always doing these videos on eBay because I could see the sold listings. If I could see the sold listings on Amazon, I'd be doing the same thing because I sell a lot more on Amazon versus eBay. But with these sold listings, you know, it's just, it's probably one of the best resources out there. So let's start to cover some games right now. First game that I see that sold for a best offer of under $74.99 is the game Battle Masters. And I'm already learning something new right now because... I never heard of this game before. Let me know in the comments section if you have ever heard of the game Battle Masters, but it looks like it's it's uh, a game by Milton Bradley from 1992 and um, has some cool artwork on the front. Looks like a battle is taking place. I see in the left-hand corner it says giant four and a half inch foot times five foot battle mat. So that's very, very interesting right there. 
Let's see what else we can see. For sale is a Battle Masters board game. It is missing one card. One of the flagpoles is broken, and a few of the small stickers are missing. The box does have a rip in it, but otherwise the game is in good shape. So that's pretty impressive that the game is actually missing some pieces to it. It's incomplete, yet the seller acknowledged that, and it's still sold for X amount. Somebody please let me know. How, do you, how can you tell what the item... Uh, sold for as a best offer because it used to there used to be a different functionality where if you hit it uh, it would show what it actually sold for if anybody could uh, let me know I would definitely appreciate that but that's an interesting game right there let's actually um, let's actually go to uh, eBay and type in the board game Battle Masters and I want to see if all of these games are selling for really good money or if it was just this one. And that's one thing I want to say, guys. When you're going through these videos with me and we're educating ourselves and we're studying different names and board games, you've got to take everything with a grain of salt. Why? Because a game may have gone for X amount because of its condition. You know, it may be 100% complete. It may just be a certain time of the year, or maybe there was just a buyer at the right time at the right place that was willing to pay top dollar. So you always need to do your research. Let's go down to sold listings to see what the average selling price of this item is. So here's one that went for 42. This one only went for 20 with, with an auction. And I found that for certain items, it's better to go buy it now versus auction. 20, 34. See, this one went for 83. It's complete. Now, is that new or used? You're looking at a Battle Masters board game in great condition. So it's used and it still went for 80 something dollars. So uh, one thing I want to say to you folks who are watching right now and one common theme that I've noticed uh, amongst all board games that sell for really good values are one, if it's brand spanking new, it's always going to go for a big premium. Number two, if it's complete, right? If it's complete, it's going to go for a lot more money versus, you know, one that's not complete. I know this is obvious stuff right here, but um, it's just something I want to say. All right, let's move on to another game. And I'm also in the comments section as well, looking through the comments. And uh, I just want to see what's going on in here. So legit game, legit price is saying, and I know my board games, and I know they have small margins generally, keyword generally. Um I guess so. If 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 that's what you say, legit gamer, I just I haven't had the the same exact experience. But again, I like to stick with like new board games or super rare. I mean, I guess maybe if you're if you're talking about like if you're encompassing like a hundred board games, maybe most of them have small margins. But I usually just stick with like the rare, high end stuff. So um, I'm trying to get my mouse to work on my other screen, and it just will not work. It is so bad. All right. Anyways. Um, Carly, Carla E says, brand new Simpsons game sells for great prices. I've sold a Simpsons themed operation game for $70 and a Simpsons chess game for $89. So that's really cool right there. Let's actually go back over to eBay and let's type in Simpsons board game. Let's see if Carla is correct. I take her word for it, but let's see what the sold listings have to show so let's hit sold listings and uh, here's one right here here's a simpsons clue game that went for 43 dollars. i'll tell you guys right now a great bolo when it comes to board games is clue clue if it's themed with something like star wars or simpsons big big money also monopoly as well if it's themed this one went for 22.99 30 um here is a The Simpsons Monopoly Treehouse of Horror board game. 46 bucks. Is that new or used? I need to open that up. If that's used, that oh, wow, it is used. That's amazing right there. Wow, that is a bolo all day long, a used board game. Now, obviously, you're going to have to check the contents to make sure it's 100% complete, but that's a great bolo right there, $46. I mean, imagine walking into a Savers and picking that up for $1.99. You know, it might cost you $15 to ship, but even, you know, with a $15 shipping fee and, you know, uh, seven and, and other fees, 22, 24, say you're up to 25. I mean, you're still looking at this person still made, you know, a good 20, $25 profit right there. So, uh, cool. Awesome. Simpsons board games. 
Let's continue down. Looks like we have a StarCraft game that went for $149.99. Here is a Glory to Rome Black Box Edition board game sealed. So this is this is interesting to me. I have no clue what this is right here. But this is what it's all about. This is why I'm here studying and educating myself because there's so much to learn. There is so much to learn. Glory to Rome. Very interesting. Don't know much about it, but I'm going to remember that if I ever come across it. And it uh, looks like the, there's uh, some damage to the box. So I'm glad that they disclosed that. If there's ever any damage to a board game that's brand new, always disclose it. Why? Because a lot of times these brand new board games may be going to a collector. And if someone's looking to collect it, you know, they want it to be in really good shape. And there's a good chance you may get a return if you don't acknowledge a flaw. So that's just a tip right there. Okay. I need to get a new mouse. It is so bad. I'm trying to check out the comment section to see what uh, people are saying. Somebody was asking, what's Bolo? Thrift Coach said, be on the lookout for. Look up Fireball Island. Goes for hundreds. So I will. Fireball Island. And I'm just going to type in board game. So um, Mia Berm Bermudez. Just made a comment. Look up Fireball Island. Goes for hundreds. So let's take a look right here. Wow. Hello. Bada bing. Bada boom. Mia knows that the profits are coming soon. Let's go to the sold listings. And I mean, imagine walking up to a garage sale, guys, and seeing this little puppy just sitting there, just looking at you. You know, imagine bringing this puppy home. I mean, you literally, you would sell this item and you would never have to work again a day in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop saying that. Fireball Island, Milton Bradley. So one thing I've been noticing is these abstract, weird, unique, kind of outside of the box board games from Milton Bradley, um, you know, early 1990s, 1980s, tend to do very, very, very well. So that's really cool. Uh, Fireball Island. I mean, this this looks like a serious game. There's a lot of chaos going on in this cover right now. I would not want to be one of these little guys down here because I tell you right now, you don't stand a shot against this guy. He's shooting out fireballs, gems. I mean, this guy, you see this guy right here? He's trying to climb up a ladder. I don't know what he's trying to do. I mean, what, what do you expect? You're going to get up that ladder and then what? There's a fireball coming right at you. And then there's a girl. Oh, so he's trying to save the girl. I see. Interesting. Very interesting. So uh, Fireball Island. Look at the pictures right here. Respect it. You see, this is something that I would, I'm laughing right now because you see the Toys R Us sticker for $18.99. Take that off, dude. Why are you leaving that on? You are just trying to piss off your customers. Now, I know customers are a little crazy sometimes. They think that, you know, all because it was going for $18.99 and freaking uh, $19.92 that they should get it for that price. Some, some customers are crazy, but just rip off the stickers, whether it's from Goodwill or if it's a, uh, Mia, is this your sticker, Mia? <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear you could sell this game 10 times with the sticker on it and you might have like two or three customers get angry and say, you're taking advantage of me. You paid $18.99. Well, yeah, I paid $18.99 for it in 1992. Anyways, guys, I'm losing my brain. So this is the game. Cool. Very interesting game. Here's this guy again. You do not want to mess with this guy. A vintage sticker I would not peel off. I probably still would. I mean, garage flips. You, the, the vintage sticker is not going to add any value to the to the item, right? Um, maybe it'll it'll give some character and context to it. But I still would rip it off because people are crazy out there. I charge extra for vintage price stickers. Okay, okay. So maybe I'm wrong. I ain't going to argue. Okay. Let's keep moving on. If any of you guys have any other games that you would uh, – like me to look up, feel free to drop a comment. I've got another computer open right now. What's up, Bubba? With with the comments populating right next to me. So I'm I'm looking at all the comments. Fifth Coach says, here's a thought question. These games from the 80s, 90s are sold to people for nostalgia from their childhood. Since kids don't seem to play board games as much today, do we see this market shrinking? It's a good question. I like to hear what, what the folks have to say in the comment section. So here is a game that I don't think I could pronounce it even if I tried. YGG Drassel Board Game. 
let's open this thing up. This thing looks interesting. Very, very interesting. Sold from Missouri. So this looks like a very interesting game right here. Is that really the title of the the board game? Or maybe I'm I'm not an expert with this stuff, guys. So let's see. Um, doesn't say much in the description. There's only one picture. So I, I would have liked, you know, if this was me, I would have had more of a description. I would post more pictures, but it's still sold for $94.99. So I don't know much about it, but I guess I'm going to try to remember that. I don't know. What does it say down here at the bottom? Z-Man Games. So... Yeah, I wish I could tell you more about that. So, let's see. Marvel Legendary Fantastic Four board game, $124.95. See, this looks interesting right here. I want to open this up in another tab. This looks very, very interesting. The game is called Colossum, a board game by Wolfgang Kramer. So, I mean, this doesn't look like anything special right off the bat. I mean, if I was at a thrift store and I was combing through the board games on the shelf... I may just pass this up if it was used. Um, we are going to dive a little more into this to see if this was just a coincidence that it sold for this much or whatnot. But let's see what we can learn about it. This listing is for one copy of the board game Colossum. The game is in excellent condition. All components look like new and they have all been counted. The box has some minor wear from being stored on the shelf. Please let me know if you have any questions. I have a question. Can I get it from you for $5 and then resell it for 100 So let's see. Let's type in Colossum Board Game and see if anything else is popping up to see what's going on. Let's go sold. So, yeah, I mean, look, three others, uh, two others sold. One sold for $69.99 and another sold for $88. Someone says, Raken, it's Colossium. Colossium. Thank you, Garage Flips. I appreciate that. Colossium by Wolfgang Kramer. Yeah, looks like an interesting item. Wish I could share with you more about it. But again, the goal of this presentation isn't to break down all the details. It's to kind of get your mind accustomed and to memorize some of these higher end brands. That's really what I'm doing. And believe it or not, guys, I've had so many people message me behind the scenes saying, you know, thanks for these videos. I actually had a buddy, Ahmed, who put a post in the green room uh, today mentioning something about selling uh, a pair of sunglasses. I don't know if it was because of the video or if it motivated him, but yeah, I mean, these videos are helping me out and helping a lot of people out as well. So I'm, I'm definitely glad to hear that. See, this is interesting right here. Passing the, passing the bar, passing the bar, $75 right here. Opened it briefly, read through a few of the contract questions, but never played. So it looks like somebody created a board game around passing the bar to become a lawyer, a game of legal legal reasoning, and uh, sold for $75. Let's see if all of these are doing well. Passing the bar. Wow, holy mackerel. New sealed. Someone's got it for sale for $249.97. Wow, holy mackerel. Check this game out, guys. You know what? There are there there may be small margins in some games, but in a lot of games and in some of the more rare games, there are margins like no other. I mean, check this out right here. Passing the bar. If you're ever at a garage sale, a thrift store, a flea market, and you come across this game, passing the bar, pick it up. Pick it up if it's used, open it up, check as best as you can to see if all the contents are there. Uh Brandon Lee asked, Do you think board games do better on eBay? or Amazon. Um, let's see real quick. Let's go to Amazon and type in passing the bar board game and let's see what it's going for used. So on Amazon, 308,000 rank in toys, which is respectable. You know, probably a couple of them sell per month, maybe more, maybe a little less. Um, when it comes to Amazon, you can't sell board games used. You have to sell them under collectible. And it looks like on Amazon, collectibles are starting at $219 used. So they're going for a bit more on Amazon. And new is coming in at uh, $279.99 for FBA. Uh, most board games, if it's new, I'm going to put it on Amazon. If it's used, I may consider selling it collectible on Amazon. Or... Um, 
it just really depends. Uh, garage flips. There's no way I would have passed passing the bar up, even though this is the first time I've seen it. It looks like money. Yeah, I mean, there's certain items that you know look like money. It's just unique. It's an interesting um, subject matter, an interesting topic. I mean, those are the ones you want to look up. You want to look for the, you know, the the year that it was created. You know, the publication date. Um, you know, you want to look for the brand. If it's Milton Bradley, if it's old, if it has like some crazy graphic on the front of, you know, people fighting on horses and, you know, uh, you know, uh, fireballs getting thrown at you. I mean, those are the things you want to look up. Somebody mentioned cash flow. Uh, that's an awesome game right there. This is a game that I've sold several times. Cash flow by Robert Kiyosaki. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to I'm not even going to pretend that I know how to spell that. So let's go to uh, cash flow board game. Uh, Mia, that is another one. That is another one that sells very, very well. Rich dad, poor dad, cash flow. Um, you know, these things I've sold them brand new. I've sold them for over a hundred, you know, 80 to a hundred used. You're still looking at 30, 40, 50 bucks. Typically. Um, I actually possess this game right here. Rich dad, uh, Cash flow board game, $49.99. Great, great money in this game. Brian Huntsman says, great thing about eBay is you can sell them and complete. Absolutely. Just be honest. Just be upfront. If you're not sure if all the pieces are there because you're too lazy to count them all, which is something I would probably uh, do because sometimes I just don't have the patience. Just be honest. Say, you know, it looks like or it appears like all pieces are there, but it's not 100% verified. Uh, this listing is sold as is. Um, please be prepared to buy an extra piece if it's missing, something along those lines. Unboxing TV, do you think I can open an Amazon FBA account if I'm 16 years old, uh, but with a bank account? What do you guys think? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if 16 is the cutoff or 18. Um, I'm not 100% sure. If anybody knows that or anyone could look that up in the Amazon Terms of Service right now and help out Unboxing TV, we would definitely appreciate that. Garage Flip says go read their Terms of Service. Yeah, just Unboxing TV, man. You, you know, you've got Google. You, you've got the internet at your disposal. Just do a quick Google search. I'm sure you'll find it quickly. Um, somebody says Hero Quest. I've heard about that. What's up, Red Rider? Says I also picked up a 50th anniversary Candyland game in uh, uh, in in uh, TIN. I don't know what TIN means, but new need to list that puppy as well. Let's take a look at that game. Um, so Red Rider says the game was uh, let's see 50th anniversary Candyland, brand new in the package. Let's see what that is going for. So I'm going to click on, uh, it doesn't look like there's any new ones that are listed. Um, is there any new? They're all coming up used. So I haven't seen any new ones. Um, but I'm guessing, yeah, you're probably looking somewhere around the $50 to $100 mark for something like that. All right, let's keep going down and, and searching through the best board games to sell on eBay. And if you're looking for these board games, how to find them, I would say thrift stores, number one, garage sales, number two. Uh, those are probably going to be the best ways to be able to make some ridiculous profits on these board games. So let's continue looking down to find some more games. See, this looks interesting right here. The Pillars of the Earth. The Pillars of the of the earth. Let's check this out right here. Let's also open up another tab to make sure that this game is actually selling consistently for what this game sold for. So check out the cover right here. Can Follett, the pillars of the earth. Here you go. That is what it looks like. This game sold for $125. And I'm looking in the top right hand corner and I see an M there. I'm not sure what that stands for. Here's the back of the board game. This listing is for one copy of the Pillars of the Earth board game. It's in excellent condition. There is very minimal wear on the box. The components are all present in a new condition. So let's make sure that this is actually selling for as much as this one sold for. Let's go here. 125, 122. Here's a German version that sold for less than 50. 128, 100. So guys and gals, get familiar with this board game right here. This board game right here, I mean, for watching this show, right and hanging out for an hour just learning this one board game right here can make it worth your time i mean 
there's a good chance you may have just passed this up at a thrift store or a garage sale if you didn't see this video. So hopefully, uh, you know, this registers and gets stored in your memory banks. And if you ever come across it, definitely pick it up. 26 bids on this puppy for $167.50, the Pillars of the Earth game with the expansion pack. Very, very cool. So we have 73 people watching live right now. So I want to say hello to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a big favor and smash that like button. It really does help, guys. If you're just sitting there and watching passively, that's great. But, you know, give back, share, you know, help me out by helping you out. Hit that like button, guys. Let's get up to 50, 60 likes right now. Not only does it help me with my self-esteem to let me know, you know what, this is helping, it's making a difference, but it lets YouTube know that this is good content and they can help promote it and get it out to more people, which in turn helps people to make money, helps me to grow my channel and helps me to reach more people uh, just like you. So again, guys, I appreciate it. Share the wealth. Don't just hold everything to yourself. There's plenty to go around. There's an abundance of board games. There's so many places out there that you can go buy and source these items. So definitely share the wealth. And I'm going to continue to make these videos on board games, on watch uh, watches, men's clothing, camcorders, cameras. I mean, we could do a video on toasters. I mean, there's. I guarantee you that you can make money selling toasters. I guarantee you, you can make money selling anything but you need to know what to look for, right? You can make money selling Legos and light bulbs and books and uh, you know routers and chairs and furniture and baseball bats and plush and electronics and tripods. I mean, I'm looking around my house right now and I'm just hats and I'm looking around and I'm just naming things off because you can make money with all of these different types of items. So again, smash that like button. If you don't like the video, smash the dislike. It's okay. It ain't going to hurt my feelings. You know, I, I respect everyone's opinion, but if you do hit that dislike button, at least let me know what I could do to improve the video. That's it. Just let me know. Anyways, let's keep moving on. Next item that's sold. Wow. This looks so cool right here. Holy moly. Bada bing, bada boom. The profits are coming soon. Ugg tech. Look at this guy. Who is this guy? Holy moly, Ugg Tact. This looks freaking cool. Let's open up another tab and check that out. Is this what the game is called, Ugg Tact? Let's go in here. Let's go in here. And let's hit the sold listings to see if there's any other ones on here. Wow. One sold for $85, $54.99. So this puppy is selling for some good money. Ugg Tact. Is that how you pronounce it? This is cool. This is really, really cool. Now, something like this, I mean, this is just crazy how many board games are out there that you could, you know, you know, make money with. Garage flips, raking. If you need help with your self-esteem, you hide it very well. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's see. Copyright 2012. So it looks like this game was created in 2012. It's a strategy themed board game. Recommended recommended age range eight and up. Um, a country of manufacture, China, of course. Cool. Awesome right there. That's a cool little item that we just learned about. Hero Quest. So somebody actually just mentioned this a little while ago. I believe that was Mia. She's like the board game queen. The game is Hero Quest. Now, again, guys, install this into your brain. Install it like you're installing a, an app onto your phone or a program on your computer. Install this into your brain because if you ever come, ac come across this, you're going to want to buy it. Yes, you are going to want to buy Hero Quest. Hero Quest um, board game. Let's see. Let's let's double check that they're all selling for some good profits. And yes, they are. 110, 60, 150, 40. Bada bing, bada boom. Not much more that we have to discuss there. Uh, Kendall Brown says, look up cool chicken learning game. I have one, and last I checked, there was one listed. No solids. Need to get that puppy listed. Cool chicken learning game. Is somebody yanking my chain, or is this real? So I don't know what this is all about. Um, let's see. Raleigh, Raleigh and X says, just picked up Hero Quest for $2. Holy moly. You're going to retire after you sell that. You'll never have to work a day in your life. That's really cool, though. 
Mr. Sadie says, I look up anything that looks obscure when it comes to board games. Uh, E.H. Waz says, thanks for all you do, Raken. Hey, E.H. Waz, I appreciate the nice comment. Thank you. Hey, Mr. 3000, great help, Raken. Glad that this video is adding value to your life. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. All right, let's continue to go through the board games and continue to learn. Imperial board game. See, I've never heard of this before. Let's open that up. Look how much we're learning, guys, in literally, you know, not much time, 30, 40 minutes. I mean, check this out. Imperial Designer Mac Gertz. Looks like these guys are uh, about to set forth on an expedition. They got a map. I don't know where they're going, but it looks like they're going to be going somewhere quite interesting. They got a big ship in the background. So, yeah, Imperial. Virtually new condition. Great description. Still sold for $79.99. Winner circle. Ooh, I like that. So let's look this up to double check. Winner's circle board game. It sold for $89.99. Um, I don't see any more coming up. Maybe it's sold. So I don't see anything else coming up. But let's uh, let's install this into our brain real quick. Winner's Circle board game. Check that out. Face-to-face -face games. $89.99. I mean, I'm telling you guys, there is a lot of money to be made with board games. There is a lot of money to be made with board games. There's so many games out there. Let's see. Vintage Hotels 3D board game. That looks interesting. Vintage Ho Hotels 3D board game. Milton Bradley from 1987. Check that out. There's some pictures. There are some of the pieces. Hotels won. Great game. The item is 100% complete. All original money cards. Game board and poolside cutouts in excellent condition. Very cool. So let's double check that. This is called uh, Hotels 3D. Hotels board game. Uh, what is it from 1987? I think was that what it said? Yeah, 1987, the year I was born. I want to see what the other games are going for as well. So wow, yeah, I mean these things are all selling for some pretty crazy amounts of money right here. 51. Uh, this one only went for 27.99. 38, 34, 55. So not as high as I thought, but still some decent money. I mean, check this out. If you were to come across this game brand new in the box, I mean, look at this one. $162 brand new in the packaging. So that's really cool right there. Looks like there's a little damage to the package. Let's go into the comments section, see what people are saying. I got to get going soon, but I just want to come to you guys with a quick little vid. I bought a Pokemon, got to get them all for $3.99 Canadian and sold for $50. Awesome, Mia. That's amazing. If you search eBay for Rio Grande Games, Rio Grande Games. Rio Grande Games. Yeah, so it looks like, look, check these out. Mississippi Queen, 36, 46. Um, yeah, it seems like the Rio Grande Games are going for pretty good money. What's this right here? Thurn and Taxis, Rio Grande, Grand, Grande, Grande, Grand, I don't know. I'll call it Rio Grande Games, $35, $33. So that's definitely something to be on the lookout for sure. Uh, I know the Rio Grande Games was uh, was the creator of, I don't know if it's the brand or what, or the maker of Imperial. Attica board game. I mean, check this out, guys. There are so many board games. So, I mean, hopefully this video opened up your eyes to some of the opportunities. I mean, we could be going on and on for probably another six or seven hours talking about different games and you know, ones that have sold, but I mean, check this out, guys. Class Struggle, $80. Um, Dream Phone, best offer under $74.99. Catacombs, $140. Hero Quest, $149. Crossbows and Catapults, $79.99. There's Fireball Island that we covered. Passing the Bar that we covered. Magic Realm, $100. The Great War, $74.99. War of the Ring Collector's Limited Edition board game, $1,525. So, you know, there is a lot of money to be made with board games. Now, are you going to be able to come across these things all the time at thrift stores and garage sales? Probably not. 
But why not be aware to the opportunities? Why not study and research and get acquainted with these items? Because all it takes is one or two scores to make it worth the time that you invested to study and educate yourself on these board games. So, you know, half the battle is knowing the brand. The other half is just being aware and sensitive to the fact that, you know, if a game looks interesting, if it's old, if it has a cool little artwork, if it just looks like the subject matter may be profitable, like passing the bar, that's the other half of the battle and then looking it up. But if you ever have that, you know, that sensation or that, that, inclination that something may be worth money and it's a board game just look it up scan it with the amazon seller app you know look it up on the am uh, the ebay sold listings and you never know i mean mice and mystics 74.99 uh time stories 89.95 trailer park boys that's a crazy show hundred dollars right there i mean battle masters 83.95 there's passing the bar again uh here's the game that i actually sold the other day for 150 dark towers uh, Dream Phone. I mean, there is so many ways to make money selling board games. It is absolutely ridiculous, guys. So uh, I'm going to go into the comment section real quick and answer some questions, and uh, then I'm going to head out of here in a couple of minutes. Got to get over to the gym. Again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, we've got 59 people watching live. Be sure to smash that like button. We're up to 48 likes right now. Let's get it up to 60 likes, guys. Hit that like button. Show some love. In today's live show, we're going to be covering ballpoint pins that sell on eBay for ridiculous profits from thrift stores, garage sales, and also flea markets. I couldn't fit it into the title, though. YouTube wouldn't let me put in that many characters. But anyways, guys, we're going to be covering this topic because uh, this was probably about a week ago. Somebody asked me to cover this. We were doing a live show researching. I don't know what we were researching. It was like board games or something. And like we somehow stumbled on a, uh, a ballpoint pen that sold for some good money. And some people were saying you should do a whole show around that. So here we are. We're going to do a live show covering the best ballpoint pens that sell on eBay. So before we get into the show, I want to make sure that the sound is okay because we are live right now. So bear with me for one moment and let me do a little sound test on my other computer. To the show, I want to make sure that this. All right, the sound appears to be working properly. Also, we have Brian Huntsman in the comment section. What's going on, Brian? Good to see you. TC Aquariums, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out on a Saturday evening with me. Paco the Dawn, Robert Benares, what's going on, Robert? Man, it was it was really cool uh, hanging out with you in Austin, man. We definitely got to connect again. Really cool guy right there, Alex Campos. Hello from California. What's going on, Alex? The Amazon FBA slash eBay treasure hunter. Hope for another great show. Tonight's going to be definitely a great show because we're going to be covering the best ballpoint pins that sell on eBay. And I can't say it enough. If you want to grow your business, you've got to learn more. It's all about education. Really, there's only one difference between, well, there's a couple main differences, but like one big difference between someone who's doing okay and making a little bit of money versus someone who's just killing it is knowledge. It really is. If you know more in this game, you're going to have that upper hand. Of course, you know, taking action and being consistent and networking and having people that are there for you to hold you accountable, super important as well. But the more you know, the better chance you have of succeeding. And also the more you know, the better chance you have of being able to utilize your time uh, effectively. And what I mean by that is the more you know, the better chance you have of going into a thrift store, a garage sale, attending a flea market and actually walking out with something profitable, right? So let's jump into this subject right now. Uh, again, guys, I'm going to be in and out of the comments. I've got my iMac uh, on the right-hand side of me. I know you can't see that, but I have the comments coming up right next to me. So uh, I will be jumping in and we're going to be covering this topic. Uh, to be 100% honest and transparent with you, I think I've only sold a couple of pens over the three and a half years that I've been a reseller. So I know very little about ballpoint pens. So um, I'm really excited to, to cover this topic, not only to you know entertain you guys and, and help you to learn as well, but to help uh, myself to learn as well, because I know I've passed on pens, especially at garage sales. And I guarantee you that I've lost out on a lot of money. So let's go uh, through the sold listings. We're on eBay.com right now. Uh, I went in and I typed in pens and then I went under the uh, subcategory pens and writing instruments and then went down to ballpoint pens. So we're in the ballpoint pen 
category on eBay. If you looked on the left hand side, you're going to see that the condition is used. The reason why I have that, that box checked off is because most of the time when you go to a garage sale, a thrift store, or a flea market, you're probably going to find these used. For price, I put in 37 and above. I just chose a random number that I thought would be appropriate. I don't want to just leave them empty because I don't want to be looking at pins that sell for five or 10 bucks. I want pins that are selling for a decent profit so there's enough margins in there. So I put in that price. Um, I'm going to put in buy it now as well just because that's just a, the formatted preference that, that I like most. Um, I'm going to also type in US only. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug that in just so there's no confusion with currency. And then I hit sold. So it's going to sell all the ballpoint pens that I've sold on eBay recently that sold for 37 plus were used under the ballpoint pen category from the United States. So uh, let's dive right into it and start studying some of these items that have sold. So I'm going to open this up into another window. Looks like we have a, I'm going to read the title, uh, a scarce or scarce vintage Parker classic sterling silver. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Sicily? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, you guys, this is not going to be good in, in terms of my pronunciations. But here's a ballpoint pen. Take a look at that. It's spelled C-I-S-E-L-E, -E, ballpoint pen. Sold for $99. And there's a few things I want you guys to be looking at. Um, okay, never mind. It says this listing has been removed. Uh, but anyways, there's a few things I want you guys to be looking at when we go through this. I want you to obviously look at the titles. Because I want you to get acquainted with the actual brand. Also, I want you to see the keywords they're choosing. I want you to take a look at the pictures so you can see how they're displaying these items. So if they're selling for good profits and you see you know, a, a certain way that they're taking pictures, you can mimic that if you ever come across an item. Also, I want you to look at the descriptions as well and just study the overall listing. Um, so anyways, that was there was an issue with that listing. So we're going to get out of there. Uh, but I think the brand, I want to say that this is, I don't know if the brand is Parker classic or if C I S E L E. I'm not sure if that's the brand or that's some type of terminology. One thing you're going to realize is when you start to research, you know, products that you've never sold before, you don't know anything about is it's going to be a little confusing because you're not going to understand fully the terminology or, you know, the words that they use to describe uh, certain parts of the product or the brands. So uh, this is definitely going to be interesting live. Let's see what's going on in the comments section right now. I think scarce is another word for rare. Yeah, it is. You know me. I'm a little challenged when it comes to pronunciations and reading. Raken, you should come out with a book uh, of the pen types. I know I'd be willing to pay five to ten dollars a book of that. You don't need. There's no need to create a book. We're gonna we're gonna go through. It'll be 100% free for you right now. We're gonna go through all the sold listings. So uh, here's a brand right here because I was doing a little research before this live show. This brand right here. I don't know if it's pronounced Mont Blanc. I want to say that's how you pronounce it. Uh, somebody please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But this right here, M O N T B L A N C. You're gonna notice that throughout these sold listings, you're gonna see this probably 70 to 80 percent of the time. This one uh, brand right here just goes for ridiculous profits right here. So here's one right here. Um, I'm not going to even try to pronounce these things because it's like you're, you're asking a dog to try to fly. I mean, it, it really is the equivalent of me trying to pronounce things properly. Uh, but I'm going to just call it Mont Blanc Noblesse. <laughs> $150 right here. $150 for this brand. And you should be able to see the uh, the little stamp right there, M-O-N-T-B-L-A-N-C. I'm curious if it's uh, embroidered or if it's stamped onto the actual pen. Uh, I'd assume it is. I don't see any pictures here. Uh, two of these stainless steel pens both have a pusher mechanism. One has the star on the clip and pusher mechanism and the other just on the pusher mechanism. Please see pick and pens. They are from different manufacturing date, but I am selling them together. So it looks like this is a lot of two. $150 right here. $150, which is uh, pretty impressive. All right, let's go back here. So here's a pen. Um, boy, oh boy, it's going to be a challenge to pronounce these. Monte Grappa, Symphony, Symphony Turquoise Blue, 
uh, celluloid sterling silver ballpoint pen rare. So let's open this up. Let's take a look at the way that they created their listing. Let's take a look at the, wow, I don't know why. All these listings are getting removed. So I'm not sure if maybe certain brands are just restricted on eBay. This is the second time this has happened uh, that the things are getting removed. So I'd be curious to hear what you folks have to say about it. Uh, let's see, we got someone in the comments saying, I am an international student, was doing FBA and had to stop because of SSID taxes. Anyone hiring? I'm in social. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, I'm in SoCal. So someone was saying... I don't know if it's Sicily or C-I-S-E-L-E, -E, means chiseled and is a feature of the pen. So very cool right there. I appreciate that, Tim. C-I-S-E-L-E -E means chiseled. So very cool, learning something new. So someone was saying probably all fakes. Garage Flips was saying that. So one thing I'm I'm definitely certain that we're going to have to be on the lookout for are fakes. So I'm not sure how to authenticate these pens. Um, I'd highly recommend if you find one of these pens, you know, some of these high-end brands that we ended up coming across to do your research. I know on eBay there's a lot of guides in terms of how to authenticate items. For example, if you type in authenticate Ralph Lauren polo or authenticate true religion or authenticate coach purse or maybe even authenticate tiffany and company pen there may be a guide that that has been created that will kind of teach you what to look for so definitely do your research uh speaking of items that have sold here's a tiffany and company vintage sterling silver quote quote unquote t clip ballpoint pen retired piece so $180. Can you guys believe it? A pen actually sold for $180. Now, I don't know why. I don't think I've ever used a pen that was more expensive than maybe five bucks. So maybe there's a difference. Uh, let me know in the comments section. Do you folks own a high-end ballpoint pen? If you do, is it worth it? What's the difference in your opinion with a, you know, maybe a $40 or $100 ballpoint pen versus you know, a three or a $5 one. Very curious. Um, in the item condition portion at the upper hand uh, part of this listing says, pen is a vintage silver, uh, has some tarnish, but ink is full and there are a few dents or irreversible. So one thing I'm already curious about is what if, what if you come across one of these high-end ballpoint pens and it's out of ink? How do you refill it? I, I'd be curious to know how that is exactly done and would it be worthwhile to refill it? Would a ballpoint pen that's out of ink have any value? I'm not sure. These are these are questions that I have already and uh, you know I'm definitely going to do some more research on it. But the brand is Tiffany and, and, and Co. Tif Tiffany and Company. Uh, $180 right here. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. Looks like a pretty cool design. So Garage Flip says, I've, I've never seen one of these at a garage sale. I would expect to see a ballpoint pen, something like this in the case at an estate sale maybe. So yeah, I think that's definitely a good place to go to look for these items. So uh, yeah, pretty interesting right there. Let me update my, okay. So yeah, $180 right here. Gorgeous Tiffany and Company Sterling Silver Ballpoint Pen with T-Clip. I don't know what that means. Hallmarked with Copyright Tiffany. So 0.295. So I already know right now from, from my days of dealing with uh, silver. Uh, 0.925 means it is uh, Sterling Silver, I believe. So if you want to be able to figure out if it's silver or not, definitely you know look for that 0.925. Let's see if we could find that on here. Um, I don't see it. So I could already tell that this has value just, just from the silver in it alone. So pretty cool right there. Let's keep looking at more items. Again, guys, uh, you know, this is going to be a work in progress, right? Uh, really the main point of this show is to open up your eyes to the opportunities out there. Will you ever come across one of these high-end ballpoint pens? Maybe you will. Uh, maybe you won't. But all it takes is one. You know, all it takes is one you know, time when you're at a state sale or a thrift store and you recognize it and the competition doesn't and, you know, you put a $100 profit in your pocket. So 
Okay, let's keep going down. Vintage Pelican silver plated barley corn ballpoint pen with gold plate trim. Hundred dollars. I mean, I can't believe that uh, you know that these pens are selling for that much money. It's it's really impressive. Uh, so let's see. I don't know what silver plated. I know what that means, but barley corn ballpoint pen. I don't understand what that means. Let's take a look at the picture. You know, to me, this just looks like a normal pen. It really doesn't look like anything, you know, out of the ordinary. So you can see right there, uh, it's got that little ring going around it with the with the brand Pelican, P-E-L-I-K-A-N, right there. Let's take a look at some more pictures. Okay, so uh, I believe the T clip is that is that gold clip right there that you could clip right onto onto your belt or onto your shirt. I'm I'm assuming that you put it on your shirt. Uh, let's see, made in West Germany. So it looks like the brand Pelican is made in West Germany. This elegant ballpoint pen is a genuine Pelican. There is an area with no pattern for you to monogram. Beautiful writing instrument and addition to your collection. Okay, twist cap ink actuated. So I don't know what that means. Sounds interesting. Cap and barrel, silver plated in the barley corn pattern. So I guess this is the, the barley corn pattern right there. Very interesting. $100, so pretty cool. Let's do a little research right now. Let's open up another tab. Let's go to eBay. Let's type in, um, let's type in Pelican ballpoint pen and I want to see if you know all of these pelican ballpoint pens are doing well or if there's different markets maybe there's lower end higher end as you guys know we've we've covered puzzles we've covered board games we've covered video games there's certain brands and certain styles and just certain factors that if you find it it could be worth a lot but not all of them are created equally so let's go sold and let's see. So right here, I already see a $9 one. So that tells me already that there's lower end Pelican ballpoint pens. Here's a $259 one, 48, 61, 200. So yeah, it looks like a lot of these are doing pretty well. Again, this is I'm so new to this niche that I can't really distinguish what's making it worth more or less. But I can I can say this right now from you know from doing books on Amazon to clothing on eBay. The more you study, the more you research, the more you look into it, you're gonna be able to differentiate why why something's worth 100 versus 20 and it just takes practice it just takes learning so uh really the main thing i want you to get out of this live show is just opening up your eyes that you know there is an opportunity and to look if you come across ballpoint pins if you're at a garage sale you see them just look you know just look i mean half the battle is looking have you ever guys have you guys ever gone to a garage sale and you see something and you're like oh, i don't know anything about it and you just skip over it and then maybe you see a live show like a month later and you're like holy crap like that might have been a jackpot, but you never looked. You know, it might have been a box of puzzles that were like really old looking and you never looked. And you're you're wondering to yourself, like, was that puzzle that I saw on that live show in there? And you'll never know. So half the battle is just knowing that there's an opportunity there. So um yeah, it looks like this brand Pelican uh, is doing pretty well. Again, you're going to want to dive more into these brands and, and study up, uh, but definitely a brand that I'd consider a uh, a bolo to be on the lookout for. All right. So here again, this brand right here, Mont Blanc. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but this brand right here, based on my research, is probably the best one. If you're looking for a ballpoint pen that sells for over a hundred dollars, there are so many of them that are selling. I mean, look at this: three twenty-five, one twenty-five, um, one fifty. I mean, every time you go down, you see one. Speaking of interesting pens, look at this. I didn't know Gucci made pens. Watch this be restricted as well. I wonder if it's these listings keep getting restricted. No, it didn't. Uh, here's a Gucci pen. Is it real? Is it fake? I don't know. Uh, but check this out, guys. I didn't know Gucci made pens. Ballpoint pens. $99.99. This pen has some tarnishing from age, which is easy to polish out with the proper compound. The camera is in ultra high definition, so the tarnishing is magnified in the photos. Uh, 0.925 sterling silver. That's cool. I think I'd like to own a sterling silver pen. Maybe I will buy one after this show. Gucci. So here we have a brand I've ne never heard of before. Let's open this up in another tab. Superb. Uh, let's see. How do we pronounce this? Schaefer? 
Superb Schaefer Grande. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Ballpoint pen. 23 karat gold plate. Holy moly. That looks clean. This is the type of pen you'll probably see in a presidential office right here. $149.99. I'm trying to figure out if this is the brand. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that this is the brand right here. I'm going to copy that and do some more research. Superb, Schaefer Grande. Not going to try to pronounce that. Let's see. Wow. So they're saying that this ballpoint pen that dates to approximately 1991. So this is about almost like 15 years old right here. So that's pretty cool. Let's do some more research. Let's type that in and let's go ballpoint pen to see if this is a one-off or a jackpot city item. So we're going to go to sold. 149, 249, 249. Holy moly. So again, guys, uh, be on the lookout for this pen. You know, in terms of, you know, the specifics, what to look for, factors, you know, what not to buy, I don't know. I really don't. This is like my first, like, I'm, I'm just jumping into the game with you guys right now. So I don't know specifically what to look for, you know, as, as, you know, the months go on and I do some more research, I'll be sure to come back to you guys. I'm, I'm sure we'll have a whole series when it comes to pens because there's a lot of different pens out there, not just ballpoint pens. Um, but it looks like a lot of these are doing really well. Here's one that did that only sold for $29.99, but it may be a different brand. I'm not sure. Uh, let's jump into the comment section real quick and see what's going on and see if anyone could help me out with some of these questions that I've been having. So it looks like we have 54 people watching live. So I want to thank you all for watching on a Saturday night. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully this video is maybe just opening up your eyes or motivating you or maybe you're listing right now. Let me know in the comments section, are you listing on eBay or Craigslist or are you doing an FBA shipment? And uh, is this in the background just as some form of education? Let me know what you're doing right now. I'd be curious to know what you're doing on a Saturday night. Uh, but anyways, let me scroll up to the comments and see what's been uh, coming in. So Garage Flip says, I know other pens have cartridges that you can buy. So I mentioned earlier that what do you do like if a, if a pen runs out of ink, do you fill it up? So it looks like there's cartridges that are out there. Uh, Canadian Flipper says, many of these pens you're looking at are valuable simply because they are made out of sterling silver or they are manufactured by a company such as Tiffany. So that's a really good comment right there. Thank you, Canadian Flipper. Let's see. Brian Huntsman says, I buy my pens at Dollar Tree. Very cool. Uh, Carl says, it's just a social status announcement. Owning a pen that costs $150 plus as compared to a $20 plus pen. So I made a comment earlier, you know, asking folks out there, what's the difference between a high-end ballpoint pen you know, versus a, you know, a $10 one. And uh, Carl was saying that it's mostly a social uh, status announcement. So uh, very interesting right there. Uh, Shamus McWright says, I got a fountain pen out of a dumpster worth $60. So what's the, what's the ROI on a free pen? Infinity? Uh, you're more, uh, Canadian Flipper says, you're much more likely to come across a vintage fountain pen than a valuable ballpoint pen. Fountain pens would probably be, be a better focus for a live stream like this. So we'll definitely be sure to do a, a show on that as well, Canadian Flipper. Again, um, I'm the farthest from an expert when it comes to buying and selling pens. So I had to start somewhere. So uh, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, Bran Chrysa123 says, do you write some of your off your meals on taxes when you take a sourcing trip? Yes, I do, but be sure to, um, you know, talk to your accountant or CPA because there are certain rules that you have to follow. Uh, for example, a lot of people think that, you know, if, you know, say you live in, you know, say you're in your local town, if you go out to eat lunch and you're sourcing, you can't write that off. You might think you can, but you can't, at least according to what I've heard from uh, my CPA. Let's see, 0.925 stands for 925 parts pure silver, 45 parts Copper, sterling silver is 92.5% pure silver, 7.5% copper, same alloy. I don't know about pens, silver I know. WMB coupon, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, the Amazon FBA and eBay Treasure Hunter says, I think I will stick with vintage video games, LOL. About to go pick up a Pokemon Game Boy lot for 100 That's worth roughly $475. So that's pretty cool. I actually just sold a uh, – I had a Pokemon – themed uh, Game Boy Color with a Pokemon Yellow uh, game 
that I, I bundled up and sold it for $139.99 the other day. So that was pretty cool. Pokemon trending right now. Let's see. So uh, me, me gone, me, um, oh, maybe Megan Eddie. I don't know. Working on shipments. WMB says peeling stickers. Philip Murray says respect the pins. Respect it. Frank says I am cleaning my basement and trying to create my quote unquote office so I can really start my reselling business. Yeah, it's definitely important to have have a space dedicated to your reselling business. It'll help you to keep organized, but also it'll motivate you to to keep you know listing and pushing forward because you have that space there. You know, it's, it feels like a real business, so it definitely helps. Uh, Shamus McWright is saying picked veggies from the garden, planning my sourcing route for tomorrow, eating, watching this video for tips, and also watching Jungle Book. With the kiddo. Sounds good. Uh, all right. Let's continue going uh, through some of these items right here. I want to continue to educate not only you, but myself as well. Uh, here is another pin that sold for under $199. There was a best offer on it. Delta Julius Caesar Ster Sterling Silver Ballpoint Pin. So let's take a look at this listing real quick. All right. <laughs> take a look at the picture, guys. Check it out. Writes great explanation mark right here. Check that out. Writes great. So that's a cool looking pen. Take a look at that picture, guys. That is a really, really cool looking pen. It looks like uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of attention to detail on this pen. Looks like it's sterling silver. I could already see right off the bat. So I'm, I've already learned one big thing. I'm going to teach you guys one thing that I already learned. Share with you one thing I learned. Sterling silver pens are worth money. Obvious, but you know what? Now you know what to look for, sterling silver uh, pens. So that's pretty cool right there. Uh, let's take a look at some of the details on this little puppy right here. Well, check that out. It's like a little horse engraved in there. That's awesome. Up for sale is a very rare Delta pen. They only made 999 of these, and they are becoming increasingly harder to find. Perfect for any collector. Features sterling silver accents and a beautiful red marbled case uses fisher refills so i think that answers one of my questions right there so i guess you know i was asking earlier how do you refill uh these pens i guess they create cartridges refill cartridges for them i i, I suppose or maybe it's an ink that you pour in i'm not sure let's uh let's take that brand let's copy it let's go back into ebay i think the brand is delta i want to say so let's go to delta ballpoint pens and let's see if all these brands are doing well, or maybe only the ones that have like the marble or the or the you know sterling silver. Let's check out this brand right here. Let's go used. I don't want to be looking at new. Um, here's one, 185. There's the one we just looked at. Um, looks like this seller right here is selling a lot of pens because he's got that same great background. Uh, 174, 175, 59, 125, 99, 75, 50, 40, 59. So this is a brand to be on the lookout for. Um, this only went for 995. I'm curious why. So this is 0.925 sterling silver, supposedly based on the title, um, but only went for $9.95. I don't know if it was because of the color or if it maybe it ran out of ink i mean it's silver so i know there's some value just in silver alone even though you know i don't think silver is worth too much nowadays what is it like 15 an ounce italy engraved in there you should you see that right there the 925 that's what you want to be looking out for to be able to uh notice if uh it's sterling silver uh let's see Brian Huntsman said, just got done working all day, garage sales, then crappy job. Let me know in the comments section as well, guys. And I apologize if you folks are watching like a couple days after this live show because you won't be able to see like the live feed. Um, but if you are watching live, let me know what did you find from the garage sales uh, this morning because today's Saturday. Let me know and I'll, I'll shout out some of your finds for the people who watch another day. Um, but yeah, this only went for $9.25, so I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, here's an inter... Interesting, <laughs> interesting Delta ballpoint pen. I'm just reading. I'm reading the description, uh, the title. Wow, check this one out right here. Delta Israel 60th edition. It's crazy, guys. 448 bucks or best offer. It's amazing what some people are willing to pay. I mean, look at the detail on this. This is a beauty. Wow, holy mackerel. That is one good looking pen right there. Um, my birthday is at the end of May. So, you know, for my, I'm, I'm 29. So for my 30th birthday, if you want to be an awesome subscriber, 
just buy this. Just buy it. Send it over to me. I'm just kidding. Uh, but that's really cool. No, I, I don't need anything that high end. That's that's crazy right there. Um, but check that out. Check out the attention to detail. Delta Israel 60th edition uh, anniversary silver limited edition ballpoint pen. The blue barrel colors uh, recreate Israel flag. Only 1,948 pieces made. So that's cool. That's a that's a great looking pen right there. That is really cool. So as you guys can see, this this Delta brand does well. Uh, you want to look for another thing that I'm learning is you want to look for once you find the brand, you want to look for the you know for the attention. You want to look for the details, like these little rings with these little designs, like just like how cool that it just looks cool. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it looks cool. Look at the color. I mean, it's a nice looking pen. Somebody literally bid this up to ninety six dollars. Can you believe it? Somebody literally 96 bucks. It's crazy. Uh, Valerie says great information, Steve, something else cool to be on the lookout for at estate sales. Exactly. So, uh, again, guys, you know, I don't want you coming onto this live show saying, you know, Steve's a ballpoint pin expert. Not, I, 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 I don't know anything about it. I'm learning with you guys right now. So, um, you know, if you guys have any tips, for the people who are watching live in the comment section, you know, drop a line, drop a comment, help me out with pronunciations. We're here to help one another. Um, you know, I was at a thrift store today. Actually, I was at a thrift store yesterday, Savers, and uh, I was just going and looking for a few pieces of clothing for myself. I ran through the books real quick, um, but I wasn't really going to source. And I'm going to walk out, and there's this guy there who. Literally, the carriage is full of uh, books. He must have had 100 books. And I walk by him, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and he's like, Steve? And I'm like, yes. He's like, are you on YouTube? And I'm like, hey, what's up, man? We started talking. We started helping each other out, giving each other tips and stuff. But you want to know what? We've got to be here to help one another out. We don't have to be each other's enemy. I mean, we are, you know, competition to an extent, but there's so much out there. So, you know, if you're in the comment section, feel free to help other people out as well. Uh, let's work as a team. Let's see what other items that we can come across. Here's that Tiffany and Company brand again, which tends to do pretty well. Uh, 71 89 65 best offer under 70 There's that brand again, the, the, the Mont brand, $172.99. Okay, here's a brand that I haven't come across yet. Corum? Corum? Not sure. Uh, Carbon? Or watch carbon fiber ballpoint pen. Holy mackerel. I didn't know they came out. I didn't know they had carbon fiber pens. That's pretty crazy. Um, let's see. What can we learn about this item? Looks interesting. Looks like it's about five and a half inches in length. Karum watch carbon fiber retractable ballpoint pen engraved. So that's cool. It's got a nice... Uh, it's engraved. It's got the name. It's got a nice design. Pretty cool, right there. Let's uh, let's go a step further. I don't know if I'm gonna I'm gonna just guess that this is the brand. Let's go. Let's type that in and uh, go to ballpoint pens. Let's see if this is the brand. So here's one for sale for 185. Let's go to sold. So here's one that sold for $59.99. We just looked at best offer under 65, best offer under 150, best offer accepted under 79, 61. Yeah, definitely an item to be on the lookout for. It looks like they're all the same design. But uh, yeah, if you ever come across this pen right here, guys, uh, not sure if you ever will, but this this definitely looks like it's doing uh, pretty well. So, I mean, imagine walking into, you know, a garage sale. I always say these, I always give you guys these funny little examples, but imagine walking into a thrift store and, and finding this for like a quarter or a dollar. Will you ever, who knows? But I mean, imagine it, just imagine you walk in, it's a dollar, you pick it up, you throw it on eBay, you sell it for 60 bucks. I mean, what's it going to cost to ship? Two bucks? You might even be able to put it in an envelope, but you probably want to protect it. You know, let's just say it costs you five bucks to ship. You put it in a box. You want to really protect it. Uh, fees on sixty dollars, a sixty dollars sale with PayPal and eBay will be about I don't know seven dollars. So let's say you're in it for five for shipping, seven dollars with fees. So you're in it for twelve. Your cost of goods is a dollar. So in total, you're in it for thirteen bucks. You sell it for sixty. You just made what forty seven dollars profit on a $1 investment. I mean, these are the types of things that can happen. Will it happen for you? Probably not. There's a good chance you'll never find this item, but what if you do? That's all I'm saying. If you find it, 
you're going to make some money. All right, let's see what's going on in the comment section. 73 people watching live. That's cool. There's a lot of – you know what I've noticed about this community that we're a part of? People are getting serious. People are getting serious with their education and their learning, and you guys are getting so smart. You really are. I mean, I interact with a lot of you folks in the green room. I interact with a lot of you folks just in the YouTube comments, and uh, it's just amazing how far we've all come over the last you know two or three years. I remember when I came into this community, you know, three three and a half years ago. You know, there was a lot of noobs, a lot of beginners, and there's nothing. You know, there's you know everyone's going to be a beginner at one point or another. But it's crazy. You guys are just – you guys are killing it. You're very smart and uh, you know a lot of dedicated people in the comment section. Uh, we got Swamp Picker in the house who I actually met in Austin, Texas. Super educated, great guy. Uh, kinetic Energy, is Yong here? No, uh, Yong, he's in California. Uh, I don't know what Yong's up to right now. He's probably causing trouble. Uh, what's up, David? Good to see you. Green Pastures 1000, good to see you in the house. Uh, Brian Huntsman, who is a green room member. What's going on, Brian? Sealed Disney trivia game uh, going for 70 paid 250 That's cool. That's a great garage sale find. Today, uh, I didn't go out to mini garage sales, but I found uh, I found a brand new in the box uh, board game. I don't, I don't remember off the top what what the uh, the name was but i paid two bucks selling for like 47 picked up three books each were going for over 20 i paid a couple bucks each for those one was going for 110 um i don't remember but got a bunch of stuff anyways let's continue with this uh live show so definitely be on the lookout for that brand right there c-o-r-u-m look for that model carbon fiber ballpoint pen Here's this brand again, $39.95. Actually, this looks like just a 10-can uh, a pen set box. So this doesn't even include the pen. went for $39.95. Uh, Tiffany Sterling, we already know about that. Here's a new brand right here, ST du DuPont. We're going to just call it that in my little world. $250. Bucks? Wow. What is going on with this? So I think I see Paris. So it looks like we've got a, a Paris item. $250, pretty cool. I don't know what that says. Andy something. Uh, Andy War Warhol, Elvis Presley ballpoint pen. So again, guys, I don't know what's going on with this right now. Um, but let's type in, let's take this brand right here. This is what I like to do. I like to take the brand and I like to paste it in and then hit ballpoint pen just to learn a little more about it because you can't just take you know, a brand that does well one time and say, oh, buy everything in that brand because there's so many factors. Um, okay, so let's hit the sold listings and see what pops up here. Wow, so this sold for $450 right there. Absolutely crazy. 185 best offer. 199 67 Whoa, hello. Someone get me some Jello. One thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars. Now this is new. This is new. I I want to say that this pin right here sold for one thousand one hundred and ninety-five dollars. This has got to be made out of gold. Let's see. I don't know what is making this thing so valuable, but this is crazy. Wow. Would you guys ever pay a thousand dollars for a pin? Let's see. I'd hate to be a salesman for a pen. How do you sell somebody a $1,000 pen? I don't know. Anyways, looks like this brand is doing very, very well. Um, okay, cool. So here's the uh, – this is what it looks like for the uh, for the refills. If anyone's curious about how to refill uh, your pen, it looks like this is the little thing. It looks like a little cartridge you stick in or something like that. Pretty cool. Anyways, uh, ST DuPont seems to be doing very, very well. I mean, these are all going for $50 plus. I mean, look at this puppy right here. $939? What in the world is happening? Jay says, hey, watched a video about starting on YouTube about a week ago. Made about 200 bucks selling some old magic, the gathering cards so far. So, Jay, congratulations, man. That's cool. You know, the keys to get started. Uh, you know, just get started, you know, selling items and, you know, keep learning, you know, learn about board games, puzzles, video games, books, clothing, you know, hats, uh, vintage toys. There's so many items out there. So congratulations. Uh, Shamas says, keep an eye out for black lotuses. 
So Green Pastures is saying Andy Warhol is a famous modern artist. So that's good to know right there. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. Uh, Mr. McWright is saying keep an eye out, Mr. or Mrs., keep an eye out on those random trends on eBay. They can make you a lot of money, and a week later they can sell for nearly nothing. I agree with you 100%. Kinetic Energy, based on you and Chris messing with Yong about views in your video. <laughs> you saw that video. That was really funny. Uh, David McNeil says, I got my first sale on Amazon today. So everyone congratulate David. I know you guys out there who are selling on Amazon, I know you remember your first sale. It was a milestone. It was an epic day. I still remember mine. Um, yeah, I mean, your first sale is so important. Med for you one. I'm not that smart. I'm not either. You don't have to be smart in this business. You know, you don't have to be the most talented, the smartest, the brightest, the quickest, the fastest, the most talented in this reselling business. What you need to be is committed. You got to be committed to learning, committed to being consistent, committed to taking action. You don't have to be the smartest. You know, the sad thing is, and I know a lot of the, the old timers who are watching now who are you know, who've been in this business for 10, 20 years, they kind of hate on the folks like, uh, you know, myself and the newer people who've been doing it over the last five years, because you don't necessarily have to be the brightest or the smartest. You just need a smartphone. You just got to look it up on eBay, scan it with your barcode, with your Amazon seller app. I mean, technology can do a lot of work. Obviously you need some common sense, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm oversimplifying the whole thing, uh, in general, but, uh, you know, if you have a smartphone, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in ballpoint pens or in puzzles or board games or clothing. Just look it up. That's the number one thing I could say. If you're not sure if you should buy an item, just look it up, right? Just look it up on your eBay app or your Amazon seller app and just see, you know, what are they selling for? What's the rank? How often are they selling? Find one that's sold that's comparable, you know? So, you know, if you're looking, you know, at a specific pen, uh, to purchase, find the same one that is sold if you can. And that's going to give you an idea of, you know, the value. So, um, you know, dead serious. You don't have to be the smartest. Uh, what happened to your vending machine business? I enjoyed it while it lasted. was really considering it for my own business. I can't tell you guys how many times I get that question. Um, but to answer that, I decided not to go forward with that business. Just, you know, the time it was going to take and, um, it just it really the time, the time was the biggest factor. And I just never, I never really dove into it and I just decided it wasn't for me. So, but I gave it a shot. Uh, we dig history. I'll second Jay's comment. Just started a few weeks ago, watching your vids made $250 so far, a couple Robert Graham shirts and some time in Bahamas and a few other things. We dig history. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people I meet who, they watch the videos, they listen to podcasts, blog posts, um, TV shows, whatever, right? They, they get knowledge, but they never take any action. So I'm clapping for you. I commend you for taking action and, you know, listing your items up and selling it. That's the start. That's the start. And uh, anybody can do this business. Doesn't take, you know, a special person. Doesn't, doesn't, you don't have to be a man or a woman or you don't have to be young. doesn't matter if you're old or young, whatever, you know. Anyone could do this business. I see 15-year-olds killing it. Um, we've got a few uh, members in the green room, which is a private uh, website that I run with three other guys, which kind of, you know, it's a, it's a whole community based around reselling. You get more attention. We have Bolo videos, all this information, private shows. Uh, you could check that out at greenroomuniversity.com. But we have two members in there, uh, Carol and Les. And I want to say that they're in their 70s or 80s. Uh, and successful resellers, you know, selling on eBay and Amazon. So it doesn't matter your age. There's 15 year olds, there's 70, 80 year olds, there's men, women, kids. Doesn't matter. Anybody can do this business. Uh, anyways, let's continue going down the line. Here's uh, this is something different. I'm not going to look into that, but it looked like something interesting. Levenger, 140 bucks. Uh, Visconti. We're, we're going to start to just kind of roll through them instead of diving into them. Visconti. Opera Pen, 149, best offer accepted. Uh, Rare Lamy, ballpoint pen. See, that looks interesting. I, I, I can't resist. I have to open it up because it looks, to be honest, it kind of looks stupid. Um, $59.99, why? Why is that going for $59.99? I, I have to look into this. Um, let's, let's type that in. 
Why is that going for so much money? Let's type used. Hey, guys, 73 people in the house, 77. Smash that like button, guys. Show some love. I'll tell you right now, for content creators, the one thing you can do to make them the happiest, it isn't buying their stuff or whatever, you know, liking them on Facebook. That doesn't matter. Hit the like button on YouTube. Show some love right now. I'm telling you right now, it really motivates us to keep making more videos. So I really would appreciate it if you hit that like button on the YouTube like the like button right under the watching now. Smash it. Anyways, 6265 Lamy Fountain and Ballpoint Pen set in the original box. Here's the one we just saw. Here's two of them that only went for $17.95. They don't look as sexy as these. 1990, 1990, $175. What in the world is going on right here? I don't know, guys. It's crazy. Some of these items are just going for ridiculous amounts of money. Let's see something that would point at why it's going for this much money. This is a beautiful Lamy Titanium ballpoint pen. So maybe it's the titanium. Very hard to find. There are not any dents or brooking parts. I think they meant to say broken. One tip right here, guys. When you're creating your listing, make it so people could read. Make it professional. Um... I'm going to read this the way it sounds. There is no, there was no any dents or brooking parts on this pen. Tay refill is still working. Unique design. So maybe this is a foreigner or something. I know I'm, I'm just joking around, but seriously, um, you know, try your best to make it look as professional as possible. But three bids, 175. It's crazy. It's crazy the amount of money that's going on for these uh, pens right here. So I definitely say look into this brand right here. It doesn't look like anything super sexy, um, but you know, twenty even twenty six bucks, right? Even a fifteen dollar pen, you pick it up for a quarter. There's money to be made. Those add up at the end of the day. You know, it depends on your business model. You know, some people are looking for that fast nickel, slow dime. Um, some people want to you know flip it quick, make a couple bucks. Others are willing to wait for that. $100 profit. It's going to depend on your business model. But for me, I've always liked to sprinkle in some of the uh, the fast nickel quick flips for five, 10 bucks. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the month, that's what I meant to say. At the end of the month, you know, if you've got 40 or 50 little quick flips for $5 profit, you know, that's a nice little car payment right there. Right there. Or, you know, if you have a couple hundred of them, you know, that could be a, a, you know, rent for your apartment. So, you know, don't underestimate the value of the quick flips for a couple bucks as well. Um, in a pen, you know, it's going to be easy to ship, easy to store. I'd assume that the return rates would probably be a lot lower compared to like electronic item or a clothing item. So, you know, even if you can get a pen and flip a little lamey for, for $19.99, why not? You know, why not? Uh, let's see. Let's find one more item, guys, and uh, then we're going to uh, jump into the comments and just do a little bit of Q&A. Let's see. So here's something. A vintage Parker 75 sterling silver 0 0.9 millimeter mechanical pencil. So this is interesting right here. I think I've seen this brand before looking through the sold listings. I want to say the brand is Parker. It's got a cool little design to it. Parker 75. So I don't know if Parker 75 is the brand or if it's just Parker. Apologize, guys. Uh, it looks like the brand is Parker. I don't know what the 75 stands for. Is it 75% sterling silver? I thought serving silver was always 0.925. Anyways, uh, mark on pencil, Parker sterling cap and barrel USA. No scratch dings and dents on pencil. Looks like new. No mechanical problem. Twist to work. Excellent. Please look at all picks for pencil and box condition. Thanks for... Looking, so it looks like there's a question at the bottom. Question was, hello, for Parker 75 pencil number 26250918. With us importing shipping charges, I wanted to know to ship it to London, UK. Are there any charges from UK? Thanks, Tony. This pencil listed with Global Shipping Program asked eBay how much they charge. So that's a good question right there. Um, I know if, if, if buyers purchase from different countries, there's typically going to be custom charges. Uh, uh, international charges from going over the border and stuff like that. So uh, that's a good question. If you're if you're using the global shipping program, which is kind of like the middleman, 
for example, typically before the global shipping program existed, you know, say you sold something to Taiwan, you'd ship directly to Taiwan. Now with the global shipping program, what you're doing essentially is you're shipping to eBay. Um, I believe it's in like Illinois. So you're shipping to their warehouse, which is referred to as this whole act is referred to as the global shipping program. So what you're doing is you're shipping to them. And once it hits them, you're done. You know, your hands are wiped clean of the of the delivery to the customer. And then they take care of it. You know, they fill out the custom forms. And, and um, is that what I'm trying to say? The customs forms? I think so. I don't know. Anyways, it's been a long day. Um, they fill out all the paperwork and all that stuff. And then you're not responsible for getting it there. You're responsible just to get it to the global shipping program, from my understanding. So um, if you have a question regarding the global shipping program, I'm not sure how you'd answer it. So they just asked, you know, they just said, you know, ask eBay. So anyways, guys, let's dive into the comments. Uh, hopefully this live show uh, up until this point was beneficial to you. If you have any tips or um, suggestions for another live show, maybe another type of item, or maybe something related to pens, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know if you like this show. Again, guys, um, be 100% honest. Not only did I want to help you guys out, but I wanted to learn for myself because education is key. Learning is, you know, is, is the number one thing to make more money in this business. The more you know, the more you grow. So that's it right there in rhyme form. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. Definitely learned about some of the top dogs when it comes to ballpoint pens. Uh, still have a lot to learn. I'm probably going to do another show on this maybe in a couple more weeks to just get more acquainted with the terminologies and uh, the different items out there, the brands, the models, you know, what makes it valuable, what doesn't. But anyways, let's dive into the comments section right now. It looks like we're down to 67 people. Still a good, a good crowd on a Saturday night. So really happy with that. Again, if you are and have enjoyed this show up until this point, be sure to smash that like button, guys. We're only at 55. Let's hit 100. Let's hit 100 likes because I know some people are coming in. They're going out. Make sure to smash that like button right now. Show some love for raking profit and for ballpoint pens. So um, Frank Rizzo says, Hey Steve, I'm somewhat new to eBay and received an email regarding eBay valet. What are your thoughts on that? So I've never used eBay valet. Uh, for the folks out there who are curious what that is, it's a program eBay has where you ship in your items to them and there are restrictions on the type of items that you can send into them. Uh, just type in eBay valet and you can read a whole, you know, whole list of things they accept and they don't accept. Uh, but essentially what eBay valet is, is you ship in your items to them into eBay. They picture it. Uh, they take pictures, they create a description, they create a listing for you. And, uh, I believe when it sells, they ship it out to the customer and everything and you get a cut. Now, um, you know, obviously when you sell your item, you know, on your own and you photograph it and all that, you make everything minus about 12% fees from, you know, eBay and PayPal fees. But with the eBay valet, I think based on what it sells for, I think you get like anywhere between a 50 or a 40 to a 70% cut based on the, um, on how much it sells for. So I'm not hundred percent sure. I've never used it. I've heard a lot of bad things about it, to be honest with you. I've heard a lot of bad things about it. Uh, a couple of years ago, but I haven't looked into it recently. So maybe they've made some changes and it's better. If you use eBay valet, let us know in the comment section. Do you like it? Is it worth it for you? Why do you use it? Uh, the good and the bad. Let us know. Swamp picker says, can we ever give you items for show topics? Yeah, for sure. Let us, let me know for sure. If you want me to research a, uh, a specific item, uh, and we can do it live. I'm here to learn. I'm here to help you guys out as much as possible. So definitely be sure to let me know. Uh, Suzanne Hutchinson. What's up, Susanna? Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while, says uh, she's referring to the, the eBay Valet program. Uh, they sold nothing for me, and it was pretty nice stuff. So there you go. Frank Rizzo says, thanks, Steve. So it's somewhat similar to FBA on Amazon. Yes, it is. It's somewhat similar. Um, but I think there's a lot more incentives for someone to purchase through FBA versus through eBay Valet. And to be honest, I don't think they're going to give as much love to your listing as you would. 
Um, but I may be wrong. I try not to judge a book by its cover. So, you know, I like to try things on my own before I, I make a statement like that. So, you know, if you're considering eBay valet, just send in a few items and see how it works for you. That's my best advice. But if you guys have any questions, I'm in the comment section right now. I'm here to answer your questions. We have 68 people watching live. If you've got a question about ballpoint pens, eBay, Amazon, YouTube, anything, shoot me a question right now. I'm just going to be hanging out with you guys for a few more minutes, answering questions. Scott McFarland says vintage boom boxes would be a good topic. I'm actually going to write that down. That's an excellent show topic. So let me know, guys, any show topics you'd like me to cover. Uh, Scott just said vintage boom boxes. So I'm writing that down right there. Uh, med for you one says, can you donate unsold items and write them off? Yes, you can. You can donate them. Um, I would talk to your CPA or your accountant in terms of, you know, how to go about doing so, but you can definitely donate items and, and have them as, as write-offs for sure. Would love a video on how you analyze Amazon app after scanning an item to determine if you want to buy. So I believe I've covered this before, Philip, uh, type in rake and profit Amazon seller app. I believe I've covered this. Um, I know I've, I've covered it on uh, live shows as well, um, but that's another idea as well. Analyzing deals on Amazon seller app. I'm just writing this down. Appreciate all your feedback, guys. I'm here to help as much as possible. Uh, Twin uh, MTY Estrada says fountain pens sell for more than ballpoint pens. So there's another idea, fountain pens. Thank you so much. Definitely do a video on that. Nevada Picker 702 says I had an item returned by a customer on Amazon, then it disappeared. So what happened, what may have happened is they returned it and then it was unfulfillable. So possibly this is what may have happened. Maybe you sold, let's just say you sold a, a brand new in the, uh, a brand new sealed Monopoly game, right? You sold it to the customer. Well, they may have returned it, but they opened it up and now it's unfulfillable. It's not in the same condition. So Amazon might, might have yanked it out of your inventory. So you're definitely going to want to go into your inventory and check that out. Uh, I believe is it, I'm going to just call you K. K asks, uh, how many units do you sell on average? Uh, per day do you sell on average? It really, really depends. Um, you know, there's some days where I only sell a couple. There's some days where I, where I sell, you know, 10 or 12, uh, on Amazon. Uh, but typically on average, I would say probably somewhere, um, somewhere between seven to 15 items a day on Amazon. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge Amazon seller, you know, my numbers, they vary based on how much effort I'm putting into it. But typically, I'm somewhere between the four to $8,000 per month on average. Um, you know, I have hit around ten grand before on Amazon FBA as well. But the one thing you have to remember with Amazon is the more you put in, the more you ship out, the more you list, the more you're going to make. So uh, also, I do a lot of higher end items as well. I do some retail arbitrage. I do a lot of pawn shop stuff. So it's a lot easier for me to hit those gross numbers, you know, dealing with electronics and higher end stuff from pawn shops, cameras. How often do you reprice it, uh, reprice your inventory on Amazon FBA? I use a repricer. Uh, the repricer I use is uh, repriceit.com. I'll type that into the comments section right now. Uh, reprice it. I'm just going to type in .com because it won't let me uh, type the actual URL in there. Uh, but what a repricer is, it is a uh, software that will automatically reprice your items uh, based on the uh, the rules that you set for it. So for example, I use reprice it. I have, I think I have probably less than a thousand items in my inventory now because I haven't been shipping in a ton lately. was in Austin, Texas for about 10 days and have, have been busy with other things. So my inventory is probably under a thousand. Uh, but for around a thousand items, reprice it is about $17 per month for me. And what it does is it reprices my items based on certain rules that I set for it within the software on the website. So my items get repriced four different times per day. Um, so that's pretty much an autopilot for me. Uh, but if you don't have a repricer, I would definitely go in at least every couple of weeks and make sure your uh, your items are repetitive. 
Um, let's see. WMB Coupon says, I sent a book into Amazon and forgot to put the suffocation warning on it. Can I have them fix it or should I ask for it to be sent back to me and fix it? Amazon has not contacted me yet. There's probably a good chance you're going to just get away with it. You know, I wouldn't recommend doing it often. Um, you could get it sent back to you, but honestly, I mean, let, let me know in the comments what you folks would do. I would probably just let it go through and see what happens. Um, especially if you don't have any warnings, but if you've been warned previously, uh, then I'd probably just pull it out of my inventory and have it sent back. Or you know what you might want to just do? Just contact uh, Amazon. Just go into your Amazon seller account under help, um, contact them, say, listen, I forgot to put a suffocation warning on one of the items. What, what should I do? And see what they say. What's going on, everybody? On YouTube, Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another live show and in today's live show we're going to be spying on the competition to see what clothing items are selling on ebay so this is a live show which means we do have the live feed going on right now so if you are on a desktop look over to the right hand side and there should be some people chit chatting in there we'll love if you guys could take a minute right now to hit that like button would definitely appreciate that and if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm posting new daily videos and you never know what you could learn. All it takes is one strategy, one tip. There's been times where I've watched videos or I've been a part of a Facebook group and there was one thing that I took from it and I was like, wow, that's going to change my business forever. And it did. And the same thing could apply here in this live show. So we're going to be spying on a competition taking a look at what clothing items are selling on eBay. So it looks like we got a lot of people pouring on in right now, 42, 46, 48, 51 people watching live. Want to shout some people out. Susanna Hutchinson, what's going on? Green Pastors 1000, good to see you. Miss Beauty 79, John Hardesty, Eddie Willis, Garrett Elsrode, Dash Sweezy, I'm your biggest fan. Love your vids. So Dash, good to see you. Appreciate the love. Nanette, what's going on? Frank, Meg, thanks everybody for coming in to the live show. So we're going to be doing a little research with clothing right now because I think it's a great opportunity to make money right now, especially with all the fear that is brewing, brewing in the Amazon community right now with all the restrictions that have been happening lately. And if you don't know what I mean, a lot of brands, like for example, Nike, there was a scare a while back with Nikon and Sony, even though it got sorted out. Um, there's a lot of brands out there that aren't allowing you to sell their products anymore on Amazon. And I think Lego had something that happened today as well. So what that means is there's a great opportunity to make money selling on eBay and especially with clothing. I tell you guys, you know, I go to the electronics aisle, I go to the board game aisle, even the book aisle. And I see competition there and I see sometimes it's slim picking, but I tell you the one part of the thrift store that tends to always be empty and nobody wants to do it because it's hard work, but there's a great opportunity is clothing. So we're going to dive into the sold listings and then we're going to start to study some of the sellers that have sold some stuff on eBay. So Amanda, appreciate the love. Empire Jeff, what's going on? OZ Worldwide. So again, guys, if you're watching live, be sure to smash that like button. Let's see how many likes we can get right now. Let's see how strong the Rake and Profit Nation really is. OZ Worldwide says, the only fear to fear is fear itself. I like that quote right there. No fear, just do what it takes to be an authorized seller. That's another way to go about things. I like that, John. I like it a lot. All right. Thrifting Carries has found some awesome clothes yesterday. So let me know what you found today for, for any of the clothing sellers. Let me know what you found recently. Um, I was actually in a Savers today and uh, came across a really nice suit. The brand was Oxford Clothes, O-X-X-F-O-R-D Clothes by... Saks Fifth Avenue and uh, that suit was $10 and I was looking at the sold listings and it looks like the lowest is probably going to be somewhere between uh, I would say 60 to 100 and maybe upwards to 200 to 300. It really depends on you know 
how I want to price it and how long I want to wait, but it was a beautiful suit, navy blue, solid color. I mean, it was an excellent item. So really happy about that find. But again, let me know what you found recently. Also found a, uh, the other day I found some Pendletons. I found a beautiful spider jacket. That's S-P-Y-D-E-R. And I found a very nice field jacket by the the brand, uh, ter the Territory Ahead. So uh, I've been definitely finding some really good clothing items lately. So let's dive into the sold listings and uh, start to look at some sellers. All right. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's take a look. Let's try to find something that's really nice and then dive into that seller's store. So here's a beautiful item right here. Let's open this up. Uh, this brand is Patagonia, and I'm sure a lot of you folks already know this brand. If you don't know this brand, there is a ton of money to be made. I'm not going to dive into it, but even the bland-looking uh, little, little jackets like this, kind of like the, so it's, it's kind of like a little sweater, uh, pullover. This is a one fourth zip do really, really well. And this sold for 59 99 by a seller called vintage in Velo top rated plus 1800 feedback. Uh, the title, I like it. Patagonia men's, I don't know what the better sweater means right there. Uh, large. This is something that I like to do as well. And I'd be curious if you guys do this. When I put the size in my title, I like to put the abbreviation and the full word as well. So if it's extra large, uh, you know, I'll type out extra large and then put XL. If it's double XL, um, typically I'll put two XL, the number two XL, then XXL. Uh, I feel it just gives you a better chance for a, uh, per a buyer to find your item just depending upon what they're typing in. So I like the title. I like the picture. The main picture is clean. It looks like they just put it on a on a wooden floor, which works. You know, you don't have to go out and buy a backdrop. You don't need a dress form mannequin. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can get creative and take a really good picture. So that looks clean. They folded it up nice with the arms and everything. Um, let's see, they, they, they didn't do free shipping, which is fine. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Let's see, 100% feedback, very good. Looks like they have a store, which is another good thing. 30 day money back. So I believe if you want to become a top rated seller, uh, there's different criteria that you're going to have to meet. And one of them being that you offer 30 days, uh, money back, uh, refunds, which I believe. Now I do see that they offer a 20% restocking fee, which, which may apply. I'd be curious to know, do you guys offer a restocking fee in your, uh, eBay business? I'd be curious to hear what you folks have to say right now. I'm not, I'm not offering a restocking fee. Um, you know, some sellers say they do to kind of avoid people taking advantage of uh, returns. Some don't saying that, you know, it's part of the business and it's just a fee that you have to eat. So um, be curious to hear what you folks have to say. Right now, I'm not offering a restocking fee. I used to. Susanna's asking, do you do best offer on everything, Steve? Uh, right now I am. I'm pretty much doing best offer on everything. You know, again, it's it's just a preference of mine. I like having the ability to have a customer tell me what they want to pay. And if I want to accept it, I will. If not, I don't. Um, and I feel it just helps me to keep my inventory moving and uh, to kind of free up space. Susanna says I have a 20% restocking fee. Okay. Uh, somebody asked, I'm reading the comments, does the search al algorithm search your description too or just the title? Uh, I believe it's the description. I'm just assuming. I don't know 100% sure. Uh, but I'd say if I had to guess, I'm assuming that the, the eBay search engine is sophisticated enough to search for keywords in the description. I would assume so. So let's keep moving down. Only three pictures. I would have liked to see more maybe six or seven pictures that might have been a little more helpful to the seller, uh, to the buyer. But I mean, look, it's still sold for $59.99. Here's the item specifics. Very, very important to always fill out the item specific. Super important. It's going to help you to be found in the search engine for buyers to be able to find you. 
Uh, you are bidding on an excellent condition Patagonia best sweater pullover, men's large. So the only thing that I would recommend is is to put the uh, measurements in the description. Now, you know, four or five months ago, I would have said, you know, horrible description. It's way too short. You need all this text. You need all these, you know, all this other information. But Nowadays, I do something similar. Like I'll literally write two or three sentences. Like for example, I'll write because I'm I'm listing everything on my iPhone. I would I would literally write, you know, up for sale is an excellent condition Patagonia sweater size large. Will ship quickly and safely. Thank you for looking at this listing. And then I would put the chest measurement, the length, and the sleeves. Um, because you do know that nowadays most of these customers are searching and finding you through the mobile device and I believe once you go over I don't know if it, I forgot if it was seven or eight hundred characters uh, it's not even going to show it on the mobile so I think keeping it short and sweet is a good thing now that's one thing that I'm experimenting with um, but really the only thing I would have changed in this is to add some add some measurements to the um, description I think that would have helped let's dive into this store right here vintage in Velo and let's see what this seller is up to so let's visit the store real quick let's see if they've got it all organized um, so it looks like they they never organized their store which I don't think it's a big deal to be honest with you and I'd like to hear what you guys think about this I know some of you guys might disagree with this but I feel like when a customer comes on eBay looking for an item they're looking for that specific item. And then maybe a month down the line, they're going to look for another specific item. And then a couple months down the line, they're going to look for another specific item. Point being is, I honestly don't think anymore, and I used to think this, I don't think that uh, you're going to have much repeat business with clothing. I really don't. And the reason why I say that is, look at all the sellers out there selling clothing. There's a lot of good sellers offering really great deals at good prices. And you know, with clothing, it has to fit perfectly. They have to like the color. They have to like the material. So, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know if a store is that important right now. I mean, I guess it is important to organize everything and make it look good, make it look clean for them to be able to navigate through your store easier. But I really don't think it's a huge deal that they didn't organize their store. Um, you know, I'm sure it has some effect. So if you're going full time and you have thousands of items, I'm sure it's affecting your bottom line somewhere uh, to some percent. But I don't think it's a huge, like I don't think it's going to make a 40% difference in your business or even a 10% difference. All right, let's see what the comment section is. All, let me see. My daily nap time, so I'm going to go lay down. Uh, I've been watching while I fall asleep. It's peaceful and learning some rake and profit in my sleep. Brooke, I'm going to sing you a song while you go to sleep, okay? Now rest your head on the pillow. I'm just kidding. Uh, Sally, I agree. I don't think anyone looks through a store. I use the categories to help me organize myself when setting up sales. That's a great point right there. When to sell clothes in lots. If you have a clothing item that is the same size, like maybe you have like four or five Brooks Brothers, uh, you know, all size extra large, I would lot them up. I think it would be a good idea. So typically I'll lot things up if it's the same size. Um, but if it's not the same size, I typically don't. You could also experiment with lotting up similar sizes with off brands. Like you could maybe do a lot of like Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, American Eagle with Aeropostale and do like a lot of five button front shirts, all size large or whatever. That might be a cool little lot idea right there. With combined shipping offered, I get repeat business with clothes. Excellent point right there. I don't... How do you set up the combined shipping? It's it's been a while since I uh, since I offered that, and as you guys know, I just got my eBay store back up and running. I don't know how long I've been doing it again. Probably three three or four months now. About that, and uh, really happy with my results. If you guys want to know how I've been doing, uh, feel free to ask, and I will share it with you. Account settings, uh, but that's a great idea right there, and I'm glad you guys brought that up. That's definitely one of the key takeaways that I've learned so far during this show is. Offer combined shipping. I think that's a great idea. All right, so let's go through this person's store. You want to know what? Let's go back. I don't even want to go through the store. What I want to do is I want to look through what they've sold. Look at this bike they have for sale. Holy mackerel. I want to see what they've been selling. Let's spy on the competition to see what is actually selling. All right, so there's that Patagonia jacket. That sold the 25th. The 24th, it looks like they sold a uh, Mavic Cycling Fleece. That was a best offer under 23. Hydraulic Brakes, interesting. 
Wow, I can't believe they sold this for only $19.99. This is another Patagonia item right here. This is a T-Snap pullover fleece right here. Wow, they sold that for $19.99 plus $8.99 shipping. I would have definitely shot a little higher for that. Um, it looks like they started it off at an auction. And, and that's one of the, the, the drawbacks to doing auctions. When you do an auction, you know, you're really limiting yourself in my opinion. I feel like the, the, one of the, the benefits to doing an auction is, you know, you run the, the, the chance of having a bidding war, two people want it and they just keep bidding it all the way up. Um, but really you've got to find that one specific person who's willing to put in that bid and then wait for the auction to end. Most people, as you know, the whole, the new business model now is everybody wants it now. When somebody sees something they want, they want it yesterday. They want it quick. Um, I've been experimenting a little bit with auctions. I actually just sold a, uh, a rotary phone today. Nothing big. It sold for like 18 bucks plus shipping. Uh, but it was an auction. I'm trying to think what else have I sold recently on auction? Uh, I sold a Hermes tie the other day in auction because it wasn't selling by it now, but I, I definitely think I undercut myself. I don't know. I just, I think auction is good for someone who can get a lot of volume of clothing for somebody who can get clothing very cheap. So, you know, if you could pick up suits for sub five bucks, you know, I don't think it's a problem starting it, you know, 1999 auction plus, you know, buyer pays for shipping because you're going to keep things moving. If, if you're doing everything 59, 69, 79, 99, buy it now with suits, you know, it's, it's going to sit for a while. It's, it's going to take a little while for items to move. So I also want to say, I do think there is a strong correlation between sales velocity in one store versus the eBay algorithm pushing your listings out. I can't prove it, but the more I sell, it seems like the more I continue to sell. I don't know if that makes any sense, but if I lower prices and get things moving, it seems like even higher priced items start to sell. It's really, really weird, but think about it from eBay's standpoint. They want their items selling. They want their items. They want to collect their 10, 12% fee, and what better than to reward sellers that are helping to keep items moving by reducing the price or just offering great uh, service. So uh, yeah, there's a Patagonia that sold. I probably would have went a little higher. Oh, wow, this is a nice little jacket that's old. 69, 69, interesting choice in number. Oh, here's a very nice item. So it looks like this person's doing a mixture of auction and buy it now. I, I actually just sold a Eddie Bauer leather jacket the other day for, I think I sold it for $59.99. I ran an auction as well. Um, again, auctions are one of those things where if you start it really low, there's a good chance that if somebody buys it, they're going to get it for whatever you started it off at. I found that to be the case. Unless it's a super, super popular item, really rare. Like if you get like a, you know, one of those rare Ralph Lauren polo sweaters with the big bear or like the bear skiing. I mean, you could run at an auction and it's going to go all the way up or like a Mario game or something like that. Uh, but, you know, like an Eddie Bauer leather jacket. I don't know. You're playing with fire, but you don't know, you know, what their business model is. Maybe they want to keep their items moving. I never use auctions for clothing. Minnesota vegan girl. We got a vegan in the house. That's what I like to see. So I've actually been falling off of my vegan diet a little bit. I'm staying vegetarian, but I've actually been introducing a little bit of dairy into my diet. Not drinking milk, but I've been having a little bit of uh, cheese and a little bit of uh, – what else have I been having? Eggs. So I don't know. The rap song was sounding good, then Steve cut it. Uh-oh, the rap song. Anyways, guys, 77 people watching live right now. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching live. Looks like we got a lot of people who want to learn how to make money selling clothes, or maybe you already are just looking for some motivation. So really glad to have you guys here. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to get more videos. This guy or gal is selling a lot of Patagonia stuff. Here's some uh, swim trunks that sold for $19.99. Oh, here's a great brand. You guys, be on the lookout for this brand right here. The brand is Dale of Norway. Typically, you're going to find little uh, metal class buttons. Uh, but this is a very, very unique, odd-looking uh, sweater um, brand that you'll come across. Dale of Norway. Typically, you'll find this in sweaters. Uh, I have found this brand probably, I don't know, three or four times over the years. This brand can make you some great money. So it looks like this seller, Vintage in Velo knows uh, his or her brands, which is pretty cool. Uh, awesome brand. Let me show you the tag real quick. 
So this is a bolo for you right here, Dale of Norway. I'm a reducitarian. <laughs> uh, I'm plant-based too. I don't like calling it vegan. Let's see. All right, so let's keep moving down the list. And I'd be curious to know how are you guys doing so far this month. I want to know. Let's have a uh, let's have a little uh, boasting contest or a motivational contest. Let's see uh, how are you guys doing so far uh, this month on eBay and Amazon. Let's share some numbers to help motivate some people, and not to brag, not to you know overly boast, but to just show people that you can make money on eBay and Amazon. Let everybody know right now and if you're watching this after the live uh, after after it's live, you're not going to be able to see these comments, but I'll shout out some numbers. Let me know how much have you sold so far this month on eBay? What are your sales this month on Amazon or Etsy or Craigslist? Let us know. Let's motivate some of the new folks out there. Uh, funny story actually was at the post office uh, yesterday and uh, I was uh, looking for a large flat rate box priority because I didn't have any. I just ordered a whole bunch more off of USPS.com. And uh, this guy came up to me, and I don't know. We started chit chatting a little bit about, uh, you know, how to ship items out cheap. And I was I was giving him tips on how to ship. And I told him, you know, one really good tip is to always check the FedEx Smart Post prices because a lot of times, if you can't fit an item into a flat rate box, uh, you can save a lot of money shipping by Smart Post, and you can even drop it off at USPS as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we started chit chatting, and we started talking about. Uh, eBay and, and and making money online and all that and uh, I don't know we became friends and he was so intrigued he was so intrigued by the fact that I was going to thrift stores and I was making money online and I had a I had a YouTube channel and, and the point I'm trying to make is you know there's a lot of folks out there who who really can't believe that we're making money doing what we're doing you know selling clothes on eBay he was fascinated by that you know going to garage sales or hitting up thrift stores or flea markets or estate sales I mean it's crazy so let's motiv motivate some folks. Uh, let's see. We got Brooke Hayes, my 60 day. Big shout out to Brooke. Glad to have you here. You're freaking awesome. Oh, looks like I just got a new message from somebody on eBay. Shall I read the message I just got on eBay? Let's see what it is. All right. And I'm going to shout out some numbers. So I got a message from somebody regarding my territory ahead jacket. <laughs> and this is why, you know, I love you guys. I'm going to tell you guys right now. I love each and every one of you who are watching my videos. But don't send me messages through my eBay store. You don't believe how many people send me messages through my eBay store and say, you know, hey, Steve, thanks for, you know, making the videos. I have a question for you. And they're asking questions through my eBay store. And I don't get mad. I don't get upset. But it's like, you know, if you're going to ask me a question, message me through Facebook. Message me through uh, you know, email or through YouTube. Don't message me through my eBay store. And the funny thing is I just got a message from somebody. Hey, Rake and Profit, I watch your YouTube videos and I was wondering if you would look at my items I have for sale and tell me what you think I'm doing the listings right. I will, crazy, blank, blank. I'm not going to read out your name. I'll look. I'll, I'll hook you up, but don't message me through eBay. Anyways, uh, TY Hipstar, $2,000 on eBay, $2,300 on Amazon. Zyre Bar, $1,600 eBay, just shipped to FBA yesterday. Wow, congratulations. Miss Beauty, $1,300 on eBay. Bryce Smith, $734.75 so far this month. Getting excited. I get excited too. I'm a pineapple. <laughs> That's a great name. I'm a pineapple. $183 Amazon FBA, 280-ish Facebook bidding wars, 200 eBay. Wow, what's Facebook bidding wars? My 60 day is 9,800. Congratulations, Mark J. Dash Sweezy for my full time Amazon over 2300 in the past month. Sally Walker, 3900 on eBay. Wow, holy moly. So you guys are rocking it. Um, I'm going to open up my eBay and I'll let you guys know what I've done so far. Uh, my 60 day average is I've sold 90 items for $6,357.67. So you guys are freaking rocking it. You guys are killing it. Congratulations. Uh, we got 88 people in the house. Be sure to smash that like button to show some love for all these hustlers out there. Zion Bar, Mr. Ray, can you give me a ton of motivation with your videos? Appreciate it, Zion. Anytime. 
Uh, what is my Amazon sales so far? Let me see. I'm going to check my Amazon sales right now and release that to you. My Amazon sales so far for the month. And I'm going to just, I'm not trying to boast or brag, but I've, this is my best month I've ever had in history with Amazon and eBay at the same time. So I'm pretty proud of myself. Today, 11 sales for $248. And for the month, I am at on Amazon at $9,523.46. And that is over how many products did I sell? 501 products for 9,500 and change. So um, pretty cool. Pretty excited about that. Let's keep moving down, guys. Just wanted to motivate some people to know that it's legit and that you can make money um, doing this. So hopefully that motivated you guys. So this guy sells a lot of Patagonia. All right. Wow. Check out. Let me make sure that this is still doing a screen share. Cool. Check out this uh, cycling jersey. If you guys are ever at the thrift store, always go through the sporting section, the uh, athletic section, and look for bicycle jerseys. Now, it's kind of hard to explain which ones to look for. Obviously, if it has like Cannondale on it or Specialized or like a really awesome uh, – cycling brand on it it'll do well if you find one from like the usps like if you have a post office uh cycling jersey that can do well also uh check this out klein 70 dollars four bids 70 bucks so uh cycling cycling jerseys can make you some really good money let's get off the seller I'm, I'm getting bored of looking through this seller right now let's move on to another one what else do we have here okay Wow. So I've sold a few of these before, Affliction items. I've never sold an Affliction leather jacket, but this is another spectacular brand that you can pick up to make money with on eBay. The brand is Affliction, A-F-F-L-I-C-T-I-O-N, Affliction. Uh, definitely an awesome brand. Check it out right here. Very popular. The t-shirts even do well. The button front shirts do well. Look up this brand. <sighs> Brooke Hayes, is it true you can link your eBay store to Poshmark? Um, I'm not sure. Yes, Cannondale is an expensive brand. Thanks for the videos, man. You keep me going. Bryce, glad to uh, be able to add value to your life. So this is definitely an awesome brand right here. I wish that uh, more sellers provided uh, measurements. I mean, look at this seller, MK Bear 12, only three feedback. Let's see what this little guy is up to. So this is an aspiring eBay seller. Only three feedback. Somebody new who's trying to build up the ranks. Looks like they've got some good stuff. Let's see what they've sold so far. So they've sold a vintage Griffin full face youth ATV uh, motocross BMX helmet for sixty nine bucks. Uh, an affliction item, a G Shock. Holy mackerel! This guy's got some good stuff. Wow! Look at this vintage nineteen sixties. Uh, JFK sunglasses. Very interesting. All right, let's go back to some clothing sellers. Oh, this is an awesome brand. I actually just picked up a pair of these, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday because I was at a Goodwill and I read, I ran into a new reseller. I made friends with a new reseller. His name is Seth. And I used to always see him over at Goodwill scanning books and, um, we ended up chit chatting. Actually, he was talking to another guy and he's like, holy crap, is that rake and profit? And I'm like, oh my God, we started chit chat and having some fun. And, uh, we started talking and uh, I became friends with this other guy, Seth, but, uh, yeah, we were over there chit chatting and I was, I was sharing with him, uh, that the diesel pair of jeans that I picked up diesel is an excellent brand diesel, 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 D I E S E L. Diesel is one of those brands that can make you really, really good money. Now, there's going to be a different name associated with uh, uh, different diesel brands. Like this one's the Viker. I know there's uh, a couple various models. So you just want to look up diesel, the waist size, and the model. And then you can price it accordingly. But uh, it's not uncommon to sell diesel jeans for you know 40 to 60 bucks. I like how you called him little guy. He only had three feedback. Um, let's see. Just reading through some of the comments. Does anyone here use QuickBooks? I use GoDaddy Bookkeeping. 
that's how I keep track of my cost of goods and my profit and for tax purposes and all that stuff. Okay, so I was just reading through some of the comments. Uh, who is this seller? So here we have another top rated plus seller. Let's spy on the competition right now. Let's see what this seller is up to. So this seller has 807 items listed. Looks like they have a lot of various items from women's jeans to men's jeans to sweats and hoodies and handbags. Let's go to the sold listings and see what they have sold. So those diesel jeans sold for $42.99. The model was Viker. Looks like they've got some Levi's items, BKE, Lucky Brand. See, for me personally right now, I'm really trying to sell clothing items for like $25 to $30 plus, like even more, like $40 plus, just because it's just not worth my time lately to mess with $10, $15, $20 items, unless it's just something that I've laying around the house or it's a quick flip. Uh, I'm really not trying to mess with clothing items that are going for 10, 15, 20 bucks anymore. Uh, but that's just me. You've got to find your own business model. You've got to find your own price points, what, what you're comfortable with. All right. So just kind of scanning through to see what they're selling. A lot of lower end stuff right here. Anyways, let's keep spying on the competition. Oh, here's a very nice, check out this nice V-neck sweater by the brand Prada. This seller is currently away until September 8th. If you make a purchase, there may be a delay in processing your order. So for anyone who ever sees this and is wondering what is happening, if you have an eBay store, you can actually put your store on vacation mode. And what that will allow you to do is keep your store open and people can buy it, but it'll give them the notification that if you buy it, you're not going to be able to have your order processed until X, that date. And what this seller decided to do, Trebecca underscore market decided to go on vacation, maybe to the Bahamas, maybe to Italy. Who knows where Trebecca went? I'm going to take a look at Trebecca's store to see what they're selling because the more they're selling, it's probably – a better vacation, but they went on vacation and uh, they sold this item. It looks like it's sold. Uh, I think it was today. It sold and it's not going to get processed till September 8th. So let's see if this seller is happy with that. I have a feeling that a lot of sellers aren't going to see this message, even though it's like bada bing, bada boom right in front of your face. Um, but yeah, it's always interesting. I'd like to know guys, do you, if you go on vacation, do you put it on vacation mode or do you just end all your listings? So Mr. Sadie is agreeing, saying $20 minimum for me. Uh, I really shoot for 40 or 50 So Mr. Sadie, big shout out to you. Appreciate you leaving a comment. Anyone else sourcing from Marshalls, by the way? Um, yeah, I go, into, I go into Marshalls and I source. I, I source a lot of shoes, socks, accessories over there. Uh, the clothing items, you know, there's certain items that you could find and you could sell them seasonally. They do really well at certain times, but for the most part, I typically find that the, the Marshall's clothing is overpriced unless you're bundling it with coupons and uh, discounts from like raise.com. Uh, but there's definitely opportunities at Marshall's. I can tell you that right now. And each Marshall's is going to have a different opportunity. I mean, today I was doing retail arbitrage all day. I went to Walmart. I went to Target. I went to Walgreens. I went to CVS. I went to, where else did I go today? Um, I did go to some, I did went to a Goodwill, I went to the Salvation Army and I popped on a lot of items. So, I mean, you got to go into these stores, you know, don't be scared to walk into Toys R Us or Michael's or Barnes and Nobles, um, Walmart, Target. There's so many stores out there, big lots. I went to big lots today and popped on a few items. Uh, although it was outside of the clothing arena, of course, a lot of toys and stuff like that. Uh, the opportunities are endless. You know, you don't have to just stick with, you know, thrift stores. Obviously, if you're doing clothing, the best place for you to source is going to be a thrift store. My favorite thrift store for clothing is Goodwill and Savers, Salvation Army. Uh, but if you're looking to sell other types of items, like I said, there's retail stores. You know, you can source from garage sales, from flea markets. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I sell a lot of books. I remember when I was hanging out with Yong, retro aficionado in California, he had an antique booth and uh, we went to his antique mall and I ended up sourcing like 50 books, bought it off the owner. He had it uh, in his little uh, 
antique area and I got a great deal and made a bunch of money so you know the opportunities are endless there's so many places you can go to source you know people were mentioning Facebook groups you, know, you could source off Facebook uh, you could source off Craigslist you could source off of offer up you could source off of eBay <coughs> to sell on Amazon you could source off of Amazon to sell on Amazon you could source off of Amazon to sell locally you know there's Alibaba there's wholesale there's so many opportunities out there it's absolutely amazing so all right let's spy in the competition a little bit more so this seller is uh, selling some pretty good stuff I believe this is the same seller right are we under this person's store I'm not sure I'm getting confused but yeah there's so many items out there to sell guys I mean look at this this Joseph I, I can never pronounce this Abo. I don't know how to pronounce it I used to always call it Abid <laughs> but whatever uh, this brand right here doesn't typically do that well but look this item sold for 118 95 check out this puffer jacket $51 by Marmot here's an Armani item that sold for $49.99 here's a brand called embellish best offer under $99.99 studio Dartison. I've never even heard of this brand before so I'm gonna open up this link right quick what do we have here So I never heard of this. Here's a new uh, a new brand, Dartison. I'd be curious to know if any of you guys ever heard of that brand before. Dartison, very interesting. There's the tag. See, you know, you learn something new every single time you research. Every single time I research, I learn something new. So let's see what the comment section has to say. Would be funny to click on a subscriber by accident. I've actually done that before. Funny thing. The hotline of FBA sucks. Are you talking? Are you talking about trying to get in contact with support? Yeah. Good luck. Uh, at Ross, if you watch certain items like Columbia at Ross, often they price the item higher than the price tag. I then ask the store manager about it and often get those items for a shirt price. Very cool. Yo from Scotland, love the videos, man. So Scottish picker. Appreciate it. Older is hotter. Trust me these days. Uh, show show the youngins are getting out there too. <laughs> I haven't been buying a lot of Ralph Lauren because they tend to cost too much. So, you know, when it comes to the brand Ralph Lauren, you've got to find the right items. You know, a lot of people say, you know, I'm going to pass up this brand. I'm going to pass up that brand. But you shouldn't pass up fully any brand because there's always you know, some type of item within that brand that does extremely well, even the low end brands. So don't X out a brand completely in its entirety. Study the sold listings and learn what items within that brand are selling the best. All right. So if you guys have some questions, I'm going to just open up the floor, do a little Q&A. I actually have to finish shipping some items out. I have uh, four items, four more items I have to ship out. I've got a, uh, I actually sold a DVD. It was a DVD about 9-11 that I sourced for four bucks, sold that for I think 18 on eBay. So I don't mind selling uh, DVDs a little cheaper, you know, under the $20, $30 mark because they're so easy. You snap a few pictures and with the app, it literally takes two minutes, throw it into a bubble mailer and, you know, bada bing, bada boom. The customer is going to get the product soon. Uh, I've got a rotary phone that I am shipping off. I've got a lot of four. I don't even know what they are. They're like laundry detergents that I picked up for three bucks each. Sold them for fifty bucks. It's not a laundry detergent, but it's I don't know. It's some cleaning product, and uh, I have one of those Rosetta Stone uh, Italian um, teach you how to speak Italian disc application things that I sold for I think 40 or 50 bucks so I got to get things uh, shipped off but I just want to answer a few questions see if you guys have any questions and add some value to you <clears throat> I got banned from Amazon selling legit DVDs Wow I'd like to hear the story behind that it's risky you know even selling DVDs on Amazon is risky because all it takes is probably one person to say it's not real and then you're gone so it's scary uh, Steve, what do you think about the new Amazon restrictions? Is it worth the trouble in fifteen hundred dollars to get gated? I guess you could say uh, in the new restricted brands. Um, you know, I definitely think that more and more brands are going to be restricted on Amazon as time goes on because you know 
we are hurting their bottom line, a lot of these brands. Uh, so in terms of should you pay the money, it really depends on, you know, how heavily your business depends on those brands. You know, if 40, 50% of your business is relying upon selling Nike and now you're restricted, yeah, it's going to make sense. But, you know, if it's going to cost you $1,500 and I don't know why it would cost so much. I don't know if it's some type of license or you have to buy a certain amount from a wholesale to get the invoices. I'm not really sure how it all works with the clothing or whatever you're trying to get ungated in. Fifteen hundred dollars is a good chunk of change, so uh, you know you may you may want to have to you know think twice about spending that much money. We got Jason T. Smith in the house, man. Did you uh, wash that magic marker off your forehead yet? <laughs> have you hung any artwork on your walls yet, Jason? I tell you, I. Uh, you know, you motivated me and I've got, I'm, I'm actually looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jason, man, you'd be so proud of me. It's like, you know, it's like a father looking at his son and saying, son, proud of you. That's how it would be with you and I, if you were at my house, but uh, I did it. I did it. I hung up some, some, some paintings. Do you still publish eBooks? I don't publish eBooks anymore, but I still make money each and every month from Create Space, uh, Kindle, and ACX, which is audiobooks. So send me pics. I want to see. Oh, Jason, I'll send you some pics. <laughs> uh, found a Tromboli Men Blazer Pure Wool, but there was no size or label inside the men jacket. How can I find info before listing on eBay? Um, I would just provide the measurements. That's what I would do. Uh, I would provide the measurements, and uh, you should be good to go. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Can I buy a lot of shoes with boxes from a department store and sell on Amazon? Yeah, you can sell shoes on Amazon. They've just got to be new, and you want to make sure it comes with the box. So you can definitely do it. Uh, hey, Steve, do you plan to scale up in the future, or do you just enjoy sourcing individual items at your own pace? Uh, well, I mean, I am scaling up my businesses. I mean, like I said before, I'm having a great month on Amazon. I'm, I'm going to cross $10,000 this month on Amazon FBA for the month. Um, this month on eBay, over I think I'm over 5000 for this month because last month I only did like 1000 or so on eBay. Uh, I was working my way back into it, and this month I've exploded. Granted, I did sell a camera for $1,800, so that number is a little skewed. But uh, yeah, I mean, my eBay business is growing. My Amazon business is growing. I think you're probably touching on, you know, do you want to scale with like private label and wholesale? Yeah, I will eventually kind of moving at my own pace and uh, trying to juggle a couple things. I mean, I really have four main priorities in my business. My business is made up of eBay, Amazon, Green Room, and YouTube. Those are my main businesses right there, how I make money. Uh, mostly coming from reselling, obviously a little Craigslist and a few other side hustles as well. Uh, but those are my main four things that I'm focusing on in, in my life in terms of you know, bringing in income and uh, based on the lifestyle and the value that I want to add and, and kind of the direction I'm going. So uh, scaling, I will. I'm sure I'll scale into other things. Uh, private label and wholesale probably being the next things that I go into. Uh, Brooke Hayes says, I love your videos when you list clothes live. They help me so much to get more excited about doing clothes. Calling shirts baby and sexy cracks me up, helps a ton. Hey, there's a lot of sexy clothes out there. I tell you right now, a lot of clothes that can make you some really, really good money. So I'll be sure, Brooke, to do some more live um, shows where I'm just listing. I don't find it that amusing for you guys, but if you enjoy it, I'll give it to you. Dude, I can get you on another side hustle. I want to talk to you on the phone. Well, that's why I do these live shows because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have very, very limited time. So I hope I don't offend any of you guys if, if I can't give you a call or I can't respond to your messages on Facebook. I'm really at the point now where I'm trying to leverage myself as much as possible. And these live shows are the highest leverage things that I can do to be able to connect with the most people. So um, we could definitely try to connect Dash. Uh, but it's it's just my schedule is super, super tight as of late. But I appreciate you for sure. How do you sell NES cartridges? Do not know if they work or not. The buyer says they do. They're vintage. Um, so how do you sell cartridges? Do not know if they work or not. Um, I mean, you're going to have to take a risk if you're going to if you're going to buy the items without being. I, I, I really don't understand that question, to be honest with you. I mean, if you buy items, you're going to have to test them out, bottom line. Uh, it's good to have an NES, Super NES. Uh, you got to test the items out. How do you ship them? Typically, I'll 
bubble wrap, then poly bag them out. Uh, poly bag them, ship them out in like a bubble mailer or a box, depending on what I am selling. Post more live listing videos. I definitely will. Would you, would you consider yourself a YouTube celebrity? Absolutely not. No, I'm just a little fish in the sea when it comes to YouTube. Uh, the reselling community is pretty small in, in, in retrospect. So, How do you scout shoes with no boxes or barcodes? Uh, typically, I'll put them on eBay um, and just try to look them up the best that I can. But typically, if I'm going to sell shoes on Amazon, it's always going to be with a box and, and a barcode. So I don't know how a lot of folks do it. You know, I know some people they'll sell shoes without boxes on on Amazon. They'll somehow find the listing, which probably is a challenge in itself, and then they'll poly bag it and put it in like a like a plain box and put a uh, little note in there saying we were missing the box or the box, you know, is easily damaged. So we want to put it in a better box or we're going green. There's all these things that people put in there to be able to sell it without the original box, which I believe you're not supposed to do. That may be against Amazon's uh, guidelines. I'm not sure. Uh, Brooke says, Steve, sometimes like the live listing is that some people need to see someone show them how to do the simplest things to make it click for them. I enjoy the company. I list alone, plus I learn. Yeah, I agree. That's definitely a good point that you made right there. <laughs> uh, Ruby says, I just started posting clothes. We'll see how that works out. Ruby, I want to give you some really quick advice. List, list, list. You have to list a good amount of items up. You have to keep listing. Don't just list three, four, or five items up, Ruby. Uh, it's going to take some time uh, to get things moving. Typically, probably two to three months to get things moving, but try to list a couple items each and every day and just keep going, keep pushing. And take time to make sure the pictures are good, include the measurements, make a good title, a good description. It doesn't have to be a long description, but include the measurements. That's important. Uh, make sure to fill out all the item specifics. If you can offer free shipping, that may help a little bit. It's not proven. But uh, yeah, definitely keep it up. Is eBay Global Shipping Program the same as FBA? Uh, no. <clears throat> the eBay Global Shipping Program is, well, let me explain it this way. When you sell an item internationally through the Global Shipping Program, instead of you fulfilling the order and shipping it directly to the customer, let's say they're in Italy, you would actually ship it to a fulfillment center in Kentucky. So you'd only be charged shipping to uh, Kentucky, and then they would, which is eBay, they would fulfill your order, uh, you know, doing all the uh, customs forms and all that, and they would fulfill it from, from Kentucky to, let's just say, Italy. And you would be off the hook from, from the shipment from Kentucky. Once it, once it hits Kentucky, you'd be off the hook. So if it doesn't get there or there's an issue, I believe it's on them. So FBA is when you ship products directly to them, they store it, they fulfill it, and then they ship it out. You're not sending it to them to store. You're just sending it to them for them to kind of be the secondary shipper in a sense. Uh, I listed seven things. Got a projector screen for the background. I think it looks great. Nice work. I used to sell high-end brand shoes, and they move really well. I agree. List, list, list. So anyways, guys, I got a roll. If you guys enjoyed this show, be sure to hit that like button. It looks like we got 56 people who took the time to hit the like button. So I'm watching. I am watching the like button right now. I want to see that like button go up. 57. Somebody hit it. Who else is going to hit it? I'm waiting. I'm watching. Don't leave me. Don't leave me hanging right now. That's it. That's it. Who else? Hit it. What is going on, everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another video. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you 10 very rare clothing items that sold on eBay between $500 and upwards to $1,200 plus. So these are going to be very rare, hard to come across items. You may or may not ever come across them, but there might come a day in your thrifting career or your garage sale career, if you want to put it like that, when you're presented with an opportunity to find an item like this, and you're either going to have two options. You're going to know exactly what it is. You're going to recognize it or two, 
you're going to pass on it because you didn't know what it was. You didn't have the knowledge. So the goal of this video is to share these items with you so you could recognize them possibly in the future if you come across them and flip them to make some really good profit. So before we get started, guys, if you like these types of videos, if you're interested in learning about selling clothes on eBay or starting an eBay business, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and let's dive right into the video and get started. So the first item I want to share with you is a Canadian brand. It's called Canada Goose. And uh, right here, we've got a down parka. It's a men's size large jacket, as you can see. This sold for $565. Canada Goose is one of those brands that I have been on the lookout for, for I can't tell you how long. Great brand. There's the little uh, tag right there, Canada Goose Arctic Program. These things will keep you extremely warm in some of the most um, crazy conditions and uh, very popular. This is a very, very popular jacket. They're expensive in the store, more than $1,000. Again, I've never come across one. I've been looking. A lot of times you'll see the fur along the hood, uh, but this sold for $565. The sold listings are looking really good for this brand. Be on the lookout for Canada Goose. Next up, we have a very high-end designer Italian brand. The brand is Keaton, K-I-T-O-N. Here we have a two-button, 100% cashmere uh, sport coat. This is a size 42 regular Beautiful color, unique design right here. And uh, I'll tell you right now, it sold for $680. And the presentation that this seller put forth, wow, nice shirt with over 43,000 feedback. It's spectacular. It looks great. I love how they've got the dress form mannequin, which helps with the presentation. They've got the uh, dress shirt underneath the sport coat to just make things look a little more clean and crisp against the nice, um, somewhat grayish, background backdrop. So this sold for $680. Let me see if I could find a tag for you. There it is. Made in Italy, Keaton. You'll find this brand also in dress shirts. Um, most commonly, you also find them in, uh, you know, the different suits and blazers and sport coats and stuff like that. So be on the lookout for this brand right here. It's hard to come across, but I flipped this brand probably five or six times. I don't know if I've ever found a suit or a sport coat, but I've flipped quite a few dress shirts. $680 right here. What an awesome find. Next up is a very, very rare um, item. And I'm looking at the delivery time. It says 27 to 37 business days. That's crazy. I've never seen such a high shipping time. Maybe they're on vacation. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Why is this shipping time so high? Weird. Anyways, this is a brand called Tom Ford, and uh, it's a very high-end brand. I don't know a ton about the backstory of this brand. All I know is it's really expensive. Some of these suits and blazers and sport coats can go upwards to five to ten thousand dollars per item. Here we have a two-button wool suit. This is size forty-two long in U.S. terms and fifty-two European sizing. It's usually 10 above what the uh, the U.S. sizing is. So if you ever find like a 42 and you're trying to put it into the uh, you know European sizing, it's usually 10 above uh, when we're talking about the chest measurement. So uh, this is a 52 and uh, just a nice, clean, crisp item. Again, two button. This is a wool suit. Description reads, absolutely awesome. 100% genuine Tom Ford men's two-piece suit. Color gray with a blue shade. 52 flat front pants, $699. Let me see if I could find a tag for you. Boom. That's what you want to look out for. Now I have quite a few thrifting friends who have found this brand. I haven't yet, maybe one day, but don't forget about that brand. Next up, we have a brand that you're all familiar with. <clears throat> Ralph Lauren. Okay. So this is a Ralph Lauren polo item vintage from the early nineties has that nautical feel uh, description reads, uh, wool blend career coat grail. So there's some interesting keywords here. We've got the buttons running up either sides of the breast chest area. We've got the interesting little accent stripes, um, moving towards the bottom of the sleeve. Very interesting, vintage, unique looking item. On top of a dress form mannequin with a nice clean white background, $550. Take a look right here. We've got the Polo Jeans Company Ralph Lauren tag. You're going to notice there's a lot of various tags with Ralph Lauren. Um, there's a green version. There's 
purple, which is like the highest one. Then there's like the navy blue label. Then there's the jeans. There's the polo sport. A lot of different labels. Each label will actually um, bring bring about a different value. So just be on the lookout for the different brands. Again, another high delivery time. So I'm not sure. I, I thought I filtered everything through um, US, but maybe this is international. I'm not exactly sure. 550 bucks, guys. That's awesome. Next up, we have another high-end Italian brand. The picture is not very impressive. It just it's just sitting there like blah. But still, it sold for $1,225. Why? Because we are working with a high-end Italian brand called Loro Piana. I flipped this brand a bunch of times. Now I've never flipped anything for a thousand dollars plus. I think my highest was like two or three hundred dollars. Um and it was a cashmere item. Anyways, $3,250 retail, according to this listing, 100% suede leather. When you start messing around with high-end brands like uh, Laurel Piana or Versace or Gucci or Chanel, very high-end, hard-to-come-across brands, you start messing around with leather, you are looking at putting a mortgage payment in your pocket at times. I'm telling you right now, $1,225. Let me see if I can show you the tag. Boom. There you go. Laurel Piana. So the reason why this sold for so much is a combination of, uh, well, a few things. First of all, we've got suede leather. We've got cashmere. So we've got cashmere being mixed with suede leather, being mixed with Laurel Piana, being mixed with a crappy picture. I don't know why it sold for so much, but uh, must be a rare, unique item. 1225 bucks. Next on deck coming up to bat is a really interesting item that a lot of even seasoned resellers might pass up if they're not uh, proficient when it comes to clothing. Here we have a Levi's jacket that doesn't look super special from the outside, but if you were to take a look inside, and I couldn't find a picture showing it, but according to this listing, this is a collaboration between Levi, the brand Levi's, and Filson, otherwise known as CC Filson, which is a very high-end brand. So we have a collaboration between Levi and Filson. You bring those two together, you get a goddamn $549 sale. Pretty cool right there. I wish there was more pictures, um, but this this jacket has an oil finish, shelter cloth. Um, take a look through the description. Interesting stuff going on here, but 550 bucks, all because of Filson. I know that for a fact. Here we have a Ralph Lauren leather jacket. Now you might be thinking to yourself, this is worth maybe two, three hundred dollars, but we've got some unique things going on. Number one, we've got a very rare looking tag. I've never seen a tag like this uh, before when it comes to uh, Ralph Lauren. Now, if you take a look at the tag, it says military. So this looks like it was some type of military jacket. It's distressed World War II style, 875 buckaroos on this jacket. I can tell you right now, if I was to find this at a garage sale for a dollar or two, there's a 66% chance that I might just die of a heart attack.